and welcome back everybody we should be live here um on kick this morning uh let me get all my things set up here we should be live um here on kick hope you guys are doing very well um uh we are streaming smiley face smiley face exactly so game number one or not game number one game number 11 about to start between Ding Loren and Jan Pomnishi. we're waiting for some moves let me do my insta post um and we'll keep going so there we go is Nebo going to play for a draw I don't really expect Nebo to play for a draw I mean in general terms I guess what I would say is that um I guess what I would say here is um I I expect Nepo to go for it I think as far as psychology and just the way the match is going it makes the most sense to go for it with um go, go after go go after um ding so I don't expect him to play something and make a quick draw if he does so be it Tick has better image quality than Twitch WTF. Indeed, it does. Username unavailable. I hope you're also enjoying the ad-free experience. No unskippable ads, unlike on Twitch, where you get nine unskippable ads usually at the start. Um, so you get no ads whatsoever. So if you do want to subscribe, you're subscribing to support me, the streamer. I do get 95% of the sub revenue as well, which is $4.75 out of $5. Instead of on Twitch, where you get a 50-50 split, lowest in the industry, and you get $2.50. So, all right. Hello, hello, hello. Back at you guys. Hope you guys are doing really, really well. All right. So, again, as I said, we are we are waiting for uh, we are waiting for the game to start here. Game number eleven. Why do we not see Sicilian? You do see Sicilian, but nobody can play it consistently. That's that's the issue because people can zone and focus. Do I watch the NHL? Yes, I do. Of course, I'm I'm very big on the Rangers this year. Um, so I'm really rooting hard for the Rangers. Do I think Kick will keep that high of a split though? I I think long term probably they, they'll be unable to keep the split that high. I do think they'll probably be able to keep it somewhere around 80 20 though. If you were to ask me, um, thank you so much to Volzen for subscribing. Thank you so much to Volzen, appreciate. It. Thank you so much to Volzen for for the uh, for the subscription. Thank you so much. So here we go. Okay, so this this is a um, this this is a, this is a ceremonial first move. Um, and we're waiting wait waiting for uh. Wait, waiting for the actual first move to be played. I expect E4. I'd be like, I think it's 90% chance we get E4. And I would say it's it's 90% chance we get E4. I'd say 75, we get E5. 10, we get E6. 10, we get C6. 5, we get C5. Those are the three possibilities. First streamer I follow on Kick Pog. Awesome and holy sweet. Well, if I am the first streamer you're following, it's your first time watching. I hope you're enjoying it. I hope you're enjoying the ad-free experience. No ads for you. You don't get ads. So um, there are no ads. Uh, as I mentioned a second ago, so you're going to be a little bit confused. Uh, you're like, you're like waiting for those ads after like 30 minutes and you don't get the ads. And you're like, oh, that's such a foreign concept. But anyway, um, yeah, I expect the E4. So let's, let me refresh the page and we'll wait, wait for moves. Once again, the, um, the, the, the cams are probably a little bit delayed because they are coming from Astana. Okay. So we get E4 played, played very quickly. Um, as expected, I expect E5. We get E5 all very standard here in game number, uh, game number 11. We could get a Petrov, but I don't really expect it. Yeah, we, we get 96. So like I said, it's very, very, um, very standard so far. Okay. Um, it's all, all very standard. So we get Bishop B5. We get, of course, the classic uh, Rui Lopez once again, you guys. Um, so we get the Rui Lopez. Not, not, too, uh, not too shocking for anybody, obviously. But okay, A6. So we get A6. We don't get the Berlin. So we're going to go right back to probably some kind of closed Spanish to dodge the marshal we could get an anti-marshal with castles b5 bishop b3 and a4 am i not sure the world championship game 13 no i mean all these mornings are are really really rough to you guys i'm not gonna lie like getting up at 5 a.m like i had set my alarm and eat. today was the first time where like i really did not want to get out of bed i did not want to get out of bed so um yeah okay they, they are back so let me put the cams back on Okay, there we go all right that's the right the right scene um okay so we get d3 again we're gonna get another anti-martial close spanish uh with d3 we're gonna get b5 bishop b3 castles and let's see if nepo has any ideas here or if nepo's gonna play the same thing i just play chess for fun so i have no clue what you're talking about it's interesting yeah i mean at the highest levels of chess it's it's very dank i don't expect you to but um yeah so we get d3 we'll get b5 bishop b3 i mean casting thursdays and fridays games um there are not there's not a game on friday i think the final game is saturday morning if there is a final game on saturday i may cover it but probably not it's 4 a.m in st louis it's 5 a.m on the east coast so it's better than being in la but um but anyway 
How do I manage to still chess.com's viewers? Way to go. I don't know what you're talking about, dude, but cool story. Okay. B5, bishop, b3, d6. Now, the idea here is that if you were to play h3, stopping bishop g4, black can go knight a5, winning the bishop on b3 because the bishop has no retreating squares. So it's a favorable trade. Okay, so what do we get? We get a3. Why didn't Ding play something French? Ding is trying to be super solid. That's what he's doing. He's trying to be rock solid here and not take risks. Now, I think if Ding wants to take risks, maybe he can play bishop g4 here. I think bishop g4 is an attempt at taking some risk. I don't really expect it. I don't really expect to be boring either if, if you were to ask me I think it's going to be it's going to be a pretty interesting uh game here at the start so we'll see will a recession ever hit I don't know I haven't I haven't looked at uh I haven't looked at the markets this morning either um what are futures are red down about down about 0.3 ish ish let's see what what's is Tesla red or not Tesla generally is always the indicator that I look at to get some idea Tesla is down 1%, 163. So probably it's going to be a red open, just to, just a guess. Is A3 a novelty? There's no way A3 is a novelty. Um, Black's options, I assume here, are pretty straightforward. I think there's Knight A5, Bishop A2, and C5. This is one option. You can also play Bishop G4, or you can also just castle. Those are the, one of those three moves will be played. Wouldn't it be smarter for Ding to make a quick draw and focus on the white prep? It would be great if he could make a quick draw, but Ding is playing with the black pieces right now. So it's not quite that simple. All right, so let's see what we get here after a3. Um, so let's see. There's bishop g4, knight a5, or c5. Should I sell my socks and open CD? I'm not a financial advisor, and I'm not busy stealing one percent from you every year. So um, I probably don't have an opinion that you should trust. My personal my personal take on that topic is that um, uh, it really depends. I think if you have enough stock where you can sell, you can sell covered calls. I think um, I would say in this environment, I like the, I like that that concept a little bit more. Just selling covered calls, hanging on to shares. Um, but yes, I think CDs are still yielding over five percent for the year. So if you don't need cash instantly, that's also not a terrible idea. So, all right, did we get a move yet after a three? We did not get a move from Ding, which okay, it's not not that big of a deal, but it's definitely a touch surprising. Nebu definitely wants to play for the win. He's trying to play something calm and quiet where he has very small advantage, no risk, and if he gets a chance to pounce, he will pounce. That's what that's what Nebu was aiming for. Uh, I thought there was a way to kind of force a draw with Berlin. Yes, but this was not a Berlin. This was a classic uh, Spanish. So, yeah. Yeah, this has been played many, many times. Uh, many times. So, let's see. Let's see what we get here. Again, big shout out to nearly 3,000. You guys are watching on this fine uh, Monday morning. Hope you guys are doing well. Um, we are covering game number 11 of the World Chess Championship between um, between Ding Loren and Jan Nepomnesi. So we get knight a5 played here uh bishop a2 and c5 will will happen I and mean, this is what we're going to get these are the next next few moves uh, the reason Nepo was not playing the italian is uh very simple Nepo was not playing the italian because at this point in the match he's leading by one point he doesn't want to take a risk and go into some opening some line where he doesn't where he doesn't know exactly what his opponent is going to play that's the reason he's sticking to the spanish now worth noting that the spanish one of the oldest openings in existence this opening has been around since about the 1560s when the famous spanish priest Ruy lopez de seguera seguera played this opening so um so this Rui Lopez opening with Bishop B5 has been around for uh, over 400 years now. Probably probably the oldest opening that's still considered to be very, very strong, um, but very, very good opening. Also, the Gucci Piano is playable. Gucci Piano and Spanish are by far and away the two oldest openings that are still considered modern and very strong, by, by far. So again, 95 Bishop A2, waiting for a move from Ding Loren here. We get C5 being played. Again, nothing, nothing shocking so far. We could get Bishop G5 once again from, from Jan. We could also get like Knight C3, Knight D5. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see what he chooses to do in this position. Okay, so he goes Knight C3. Okay, still standard. What do you think is a mediocre opening that is very bad for the World Championship? There, I mean, everything is playable within reason. I guess I would say an opening that's... I mean, probably any of the hyper modern openings, like the the modern like D six here or G six, anything where you give white the, there's the big white center, that's probably fairly dubious. So, all right, we got Bishop E six, Bishop G five. Um, okay, so wait, we're playing the exact same opening, aren't we? Isn't this? A, am I crazy? This is the exact same position they had before, I think. Um, I think this is exact exact same position. Let me go back. 
Round eight was a draw round seven. Yeah, let me make sure. This is the exact same position, right? Or no, it wasn't round eight. Was it round six? Round five? Yeah, let, let me pull this up. Let me double check. It was the same same line, right? Okay, it was. Oh, no, it wasn't. It was different. It was C3. It wasn't A3 here. It was C3, and then later there was... Uh... Ah, this is how we got to this position. Okay, that's how we got there. So it's it's not quite the same. So I am a little bit crazy and a little bit slow. Okay, so back to the game. All right, so Bishop G5. So very similar, though, to the, that game which uh, Nepo won earlier. Black has created the, the Swiss cheese hole on D5 here. You can take and play Knight D5 or Bishop D5. So yeah, it's, it is different. It is different. Don't I play the modern fairly often? Well, in Blitz games online, it's a little bit different. So you're not good with remembering games. Good one. Good one, you guys. Um, so, but we do have the same pawn structure here. Same pawn structure. So let's see. However, it is, of course, worth noting, um, and as, as I just saw in the tweet, it is worth noting that this position with A3, there was a game where uh, Nepo beat Ding with this, this line in the 2020 Candidates Chess Tournament. So this is a line that has been played quite a bit. I love your cast last game. If this game goes to the last game on Saturday, also tie breaks. I would say that if we get game number 14, I probably will cover it. I'm probably going to skip game 13, because honestly, it would be nice to take a day off, not have to wake up at 5 a.m., um, that's the first thing that I would say. So it would be nice to, to get a break. So probably I'll skip game 13. If game 14 happens, uh, I'll, I'll cover it. Have I ever played Judah Polar? Yeah, I have a very, very, I have a very good score against, um, against Judah. My score against Judah is, uh, I think I've won something like four games. Maybe like I've had one draw, but I've crushed it. Ding said he's dealing with his emotions, so he can't prepare well. I don't know. I don't know. So we get castles. Uh, we finished MasterChef season one, um, uh, yesterday we'll probably dive into season two at some point in the next week or two but not right off not right off so we get castles here so let's see what uh nepo is going to play i have played go but i'm not not particularly good no so i assume we'll get takes takes knight d5 and then probably c3 b4 is the idea here you've got this great bastion in the center of the board potentially you even get a wooden shield here with this bishop on d5 so pretty standard so far uh, stream starts around five. I, w I woke up about four, 40 minutes before I, I before I started. So he he decides to castle in the pass. He played c4 here to try and lock the bishop in a2 on jail. Um, I'm not a huge fan of this. I'm going to be honest because after bishop f6 takes and knight d5 followed by c3 b4, it just feels like a very pleasant small advantage for white here. Um, now of course black should be fine but it's just it's very 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 plus now that being said this could turn this could simplify very quickly like one computer line that i see that popped up is something like this and if this happens we're getting mass simplifications very quickly in the center of the board so that's that that's what that's what could happen do i feel like kick has a chance to last long term absolutely i do absolutely i do now i think everybody's waiting for um waiting for for announcement for someone like kai sanat or xqc to um to, to start streaming on the platform. But yeah, I think absolutely. Okay, we get G6 played here by Ding. Now Ding probably going to play Bishop G7 next. We probably what Nepo wants to aim for, some B4, C3, play on the queen side here. If you could get B4 and C4, try to create a lot of chaos here in the center of the board. So we'll see. Um, they both are still wearing the same, same, same shirt. Um, yes, they are wearing the same shirt. Again, at some point, you just want to... Um, at some point, it, it, when when it gets down to it, what you want to do is, um, you, you know, you you don't want to be thinking about shirts and time and all these things that are going to add stress. So you, that's what you don't want to think about it. Did I check what Nepo said about you and Magnus about streaming? That was a pretty pretty generic bland comment. So um, yeah. Anyway. All right. So G six played waiting for a move here, and we'll see. We we get Queen to D two. And we'll see what uh what what ding is going to play here and i assume ding will play knight c6 next move or bishop g7 bishop g7 might give white some funky knight g5 ideas with f4 coming in here so i expect knight c6 have i ever dreamt about chess of course i have so wait, waiting for a um wait, waiting for a move from ding knight c6 bishop g7 And we'll see what happens. Kick isn't a public company. No, it's not. It's not. 
So let's see. Up to how many moves further can your mind visualize? Um, it, it depends on the situation. I would say normally it's like five to 10 moves depending on the exact situation. So uh, right now there is a big threat. If you play rook b8, I can take the bishop and then I win the knight on a5 here. So there, there is a fairly serious threat. So black either needs to move the bishop or move the knight back. One of the two. 10 moves for both sides. Yes, correct. Correct, you guys. Correct. 10 moves for both sides. So let's see. What would I eat at 2 a.m.? I don't know. I mean, I probably will go get some food soon, um, but we'll see. Apparently, knight six leads to a draw, so bishop g7 is preferred. I mean, if you're ding, a draw is not a bad result here. It's completely reasonable because you have two white games left. But again, we'll see. Really enjoyed your Genshin stream, Genshin stream the other day. It was fun to see you try something new. Yeah, I, I played Genshin quite a bit. It's probably my second most played game um after after chess so i enjoy genshin i do so let's see what ding is ding is going to play here but we'll see a uh, coffee coffee and water at the same time um i assume that's yeah of course you can drink both in fact actually my coffee is instant so it is it comes directly from water why don't you have an opening to your name? You're incredible at playing chess. Um, I, I don't know what you mean by that, but anyway, <laughs> yeah. Um, Nepo said about you and Magus about streaming. Um, no, you're you're trying to debate me with that comment. I saw that in the press conference. That was that was not even remotely close to roasting anybody. So I don't I don't know I don't know why you're trying to debate me. But please chill out. So, okay. Um, there are very few openings left to change. Very, very few openings left to change. That, that's what I would say. Oh, no master chef today. No master chef. So let's see. Okay. Ding is thinking here. I, I don't know why he's thinking so deeply. I mean, maybe he's looked at both Bishop G7 and Knight C6. Um, I am a little bit surprised though. I am a little surprised. A little bit surprised. Do I only read subs? No, of course not. Why doesn't Levy acknowledge that you helped him in his career? I'm not. I'm not going to get into that topic, you guys. You're, you're trying to get me into that. I actually did. I actually did speak about that comment the uh, the other day a little bit. Things were days in the Mistborn for subscribing. Thank you so much. Um, I I, th I think my simple answer to that is I think I think people should be very grateful for everyone who helped them along the way. I've said it many times. There are three people in particular who I always single out and I always you know thank for for their help along the way. That that of course would be XQC for building up the boom. Boy Boy who was very helpful when I was considering which which esports org to join and Choco Bars, who put me in touch with the United Talent Agency when, um, when I did join them, and they represented me for about a year and a half. So uh, all three of those guys, I, um, I, I, or all three of them, not guys, because Choco Bars, of course, Janet's not, not male, but big shout to all three of, three of those streamers, content creators, for what they did to help me along the way. That's simply what I'm going to say. Um, all right. So back to the... Um, Back to the game, waiting for a move. There's knight c6, there's bishop g7. The leak prep was 100% real. What's not clear is whether the... Um, what, in terms of the prep being leaked, what's not clear is whether those were like main ideas or just like secondary ideas that they had. Oh, sorry, I forgot about Rectful. Yeah, I forgot about Byron, of course. Duh, I, I, I forgot about Byron. Yeah, of course. I mean, Byron as well, um, one, of the, one of the great inspirations. Someone that I was talking to before I was even ever a streamer now. He didn't directly like push me towards streaming, but he's always someone who's around whenever I ask questions. Uh, obviously, had many conversations about the stock market, about uh, Everland, which I assume kind of just faded by, which went by the wayside. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I mean, of course, Byron was uh, was was a huge inspiration, I think, for many, many, many streamers. Um, sort of one of the, I think, like the two like Godfathers, I guess I would say. I, I think that when you look at the Godfathers of um, of streaming, the two people who probably had more influence in like people getting into it and doing things are, are almost certainly Reckful and Soda Poppin. Uh, those are those are the two like ultimate ogs so anyway back to the game um still waiting on a move from ding here there's knight c6 there's bishop g7 uh and we'll see what we get once again a big shout out to everybody who has subscribed we're at 2509 subs hopefully if there are any oilers in chat um i hope you guys uh, are aware that if you do subscribe to the channel you are supporting me the streamer you obviously are already getting the ad free experience but if you do subscribe i get 95 percent of the revenue so 
um instead of getting two dollars and fifty cents on like on twitch i get four dollars and 75 cents here on kick so um do the ratings get affected they do yes they do yeah um do i do i think do i think streaming is a real job it is levy's getting 10k plus uh we can talk about chess.com tv you guys which adds plus minus i would say on average five to six thousand viewers so basically if you look at any if you look at any of the numbers and they get really high that that basically means that if levy's getting the raid and chess tv his his true number is around four thousand viewers um before you factor in uh before you factor in chess tv um, so I'm just telling you guys that there, there's this thing called chess.com slash TV, which adds about 5,000 to 6,000 viewers to everybody's stream because it is, uh, because chess is popping off and chess.com is getting something like 200,000 people subscribing every single freaking day, um, to the site. So, um, so that's, that's, that's what I would say. Um, and that, that has nothing to do with like me trying to pr prove something about viewership. It's just simply the reality of the situation. Um, so like if I look at my numbers for example if I look at my numbers here on kick we've been getting up near 5k pretty consistently of late once the stream starts picking up um once the stream starts picking up so I would say that on Twitch probably my true number was somewhere around 10k ish um and then chess TV adds like 5 6k I should get back to 15 16k um so I'm actually very happy with the with how many people have come over and are watching our stream here we had 8,000 the other day as well um so it's all good it's all good right now it's 3k yeah like I said once the stream picks up the streams generally at this hour of course a lot of people are asleep as they should be so um yeah um but anyway yeah that, that's the, that's the main thing that I would say about it is when people talk about the numbers um you know the numbers are the numbers but you, you have to be careful you have to be careful with how you, how you look at them Nepo is kind of salty but very good oh are they not showing the cams or am I in the wrong scene the they're 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 not showing the cams so let's turn off the cams for a second um and we'll, we'll wait for some moves here um what do you what do you think of the chance that ding wins this match very low here I, th I think I mean I think next two games I think if we get to game 14 and ding has not even even the match by then I don't think he's going to win in the final game so I think it comes down to the next two games specifically this game is very critical actually what I would say is you know you know what this match reminds me of is it reminds me a lot of um of hockey playoff hockey or or um playoff football by football I mean soccer um where it seems like every game there's a lot of pressure so in the games with the black pieces Nepo's trying to hold and not lose and the game with the white pieces Ding has to hold so every other game there's a lot of pressure on on the opposing player kind of and um I think that that's actually what makes it kind of interesting as well so we'll see anyway we keep going yeah let's see let's see what we get here just play Bishop G7 yeah again all the trolls who are trying to like get start some drama I'm really not in the mood for it right now and I, I know you're trolling anyway so I don't care yeah like you're saying Levy has more subs you do realize these are my subs on kick not on Twitch you guys um like what what, do you, what are you trying to troll, troll with so anyway um Panthers getting beat up bad by the Bruins well like I said I've been a long time Rangers fan since I was a kid I do live in Florida so I I do want to see the Panthers do well they're playing they're playing fairly close by but at the end of the day I'm not um I'm not optimistic on on, on the Panthers this year I'm just like I I'm kind of hoping they do well but I'm not expecting it I'm all in on the Rangers I think the Rangers are going to win the Stanley Cup this year um that that's what I'm gonna say I think the Rangers won the Stanley Cup that you have Patrick Keane you have Vladimir Tarasenko Panarin and, and Zibanejad I um I really like uh I, I really like the Rangers chances yeah so um we'll, we'll see what we get yeah what do you think has caused casual chest to blow up recently it's just many many booms many 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 booms um uh Fabiano is analyzing the line with Bishop G7 Knight G5 and Knight 6 and black is better yeah I mean it, it's definitely a line that can be played um but we'll see I don't know what the percentage of any viewers is on on um on on kick you don't get um you, you don't actually right now the dashboard doesn't display any of those stats so I have no idea um I I actually have no idea so we get Bishop G7 okay so I assume we'll get Knight G5 maybe b4 is moving now I like Bishop g7 by Ding Loren here because the idea is to play for f5 maybe h6 as well uh wh why why do I look serious most of the time because I'm a serious person all the time um kidding anyway um so yeah um yeah c4 is always a move as well I I will say objectively I I'd rather be um I'd rather probably have the black pieces here if white doesn't have something instant like knight g5 if, if you don't have anything instant here like knight g5 um then I think uh I think black would be a lot better like king h1 h6 you get some position like this here where black is the bishop pair in the long run with f5 coming in I think black is good um can we keep on 
Clip on kick, you can. Yeah, uh, I wasn't sure if they were showing the cams or not. They are. Okay, so Nepo's back of the board. And we'll, we'll see what we get. Um, yeah, so someone was also also asking me about um, streaming on um, uh, stream, streaming on streaming on Kick. I, I mean, again, obviously, Kick made me an offer that was quite nice. Uh, but more importantly, it's a chance to grow chess on a different platform altogether. So I know a good chunk of people are coming f over from from Twitch, but it's a very it's very exciting to um, have the potential to sort of build build up chess on a, on a different site. You start over and you try to do the same thing that we did on on Twitch and try to replicate it in a sense. And it's quite it's quite exciting. I'm not going to lie. Um, I've said before, I mean, I think there is I think that in terms of chess on Twitch, uh, it's pretty much saturated at this point. There's so many channels um, and so much of the audience is so consolidated between a handful of channels that I think um, that I, I don't think there's a ton of growth left for chess on Twitch. I, I will just be honest. Um, so it's it's just a chance to do something new. It's very exciting, and and why not? All right. Um, so wait, waiting for a move here from Nepo. There's Knight G5. Uh, Nepo is looking away now. As I, I'm just I just made OBS full screen so I could see the cams more clearly. Nepo did the he did the look to, he did the look to the right, which means that Nepo is thinking he's wondering about Bishop G7. Yeah. Is chess TV good or bad for streamer sounds unhealthy to me? It's good from the standpoint of what it does. It, it definitely promotes chess. I think the chance that people have a chance to have more viewers seeing it, it's very, very good. But I think, yeah, certainly at some point when there, there's so many hours that are, are set aside and, and certain numbers start to get skewed, I'm not sure if that's necessarily a great thing. I, I'm not sure if it's a great thing at the end of the day. But, you know, it is what it is. And, of course, don't forget when Chess TV came out, it was an original idea to have this embed, embedded player on the site where you could feature streamers. And at the start, like, you go back, like, four or five years ago when when um before the whole blow-up, Chess TV was good for maybe 100 viewers, if that. Maybe 100, 200 viewers. So it's, um, it's it, you know, when, when it started out, it was quite a different scenario. Nepo looks tired. Yeah, I think Nepo is tired. Um, thank you so much to Desis for subscribing. Thank you so much to Desis. Yeah. Um, so what do I think about players not spending any time at the board? I don't think it's good, you guys. I, I think it's a bad sign. Um, but it is what it is. And we get Knight G5 played instantly, by the way, here. So Knight G5 played instantly. Do I watch cricket? My stepfather's from Sri Lanka. So I've been subjected to more uh, cricket than I'd like to admit um but it is what it is it, it's not my game but hey like it's it's what it is um so yeah is the next cct event an esports cup i don't know i will be playing the next chess champions tour event from norway so um that's that's what i'll be doing can the players go cheat off camera no because the players get scanned like like you do at the airport before they they arrive at the board and obviously there, there are quiet waiting rooms in the back there are there are uh, cctv cameras yeah um Fabiano is looking more in depth at some F4 idea where you can take, you get the wooden shield, you win the knight. This is a very interesting idea. Um, not crazy, but after King H8, what is the move? Does he want to take and take? But I mean, it's hard to believe. I mean, I know you have a pawn and a rook for the knight and the bishop. This looks, I'm skeptical about this idea. They have snacks and coffee and tea and everything else. Um, um, Hi, Hikaru. I came all the way to this website and made an account to ask this question. Has Nepo been wearing the same shirt since the start of the tournament? No, Nepo's been wearing this shirt since I want to say game number... I'm going to guess game number seven, maybe. He's been wearing it for four or five days now. But I told you guys before that chess players tend to be very superstitious. So if Nepo is... If, I'm, I'm going to tell you what I think happened. I, I don't know this for a fact, but I think Nepo won a game the first time he wore the salmon-colored shirt. And he's been wearing it ever since, sort of as a way of being superstitious. And good luck. Um... And I will tell you guys, it's the same thing with me. Like in the past, I had multiple shirts that were lucky shirts. So like, you know, I had this Canadian shirt. I think it might still be on my um, uh, my chess games profile. Let me, let me see if I can find it. Let me see if that's still a profile picture. Did they change it? Oh no, they changed the picture. It's not the same picture. Um, uh, one second. I, I had a Canada. Um, sh I had a Canada shirt from Lacoste. Um, Really? I Google my name with the shirt and it doesn't show up? That's unfortunate. Okay. Canada flag shirt Lacoste. Let me see if that, that'll pull it up. Yeah, so here we go. All right, you guys. So open image and new tab, and I'll show you guys. So, like, for example, I have this. Uh, th there's this shirt, okay, this Canada shirt with the flag on it, which I bought when I was in Canada some years back. And for a long time, that was my lucky shirt. So, like, if I start off a tournament, I, I was doing badly. I needed to win. I would wear the shirt. If I won, I just keep wearing the shirt over and over again. Um, yeah, it looks so bad. Well, okay, it is what it is, you guys. I was just a poor kid back then. 
Um, that's not me, by the way, obviously. That's just, it's, it's about the shirt. But um, wear the shirt in the U.S. Championship, yeah. But I, I do have a shirt like that. And I, I would wear that shirt because it was my good luck shirt. I also had one other one. Um, uh, let me see if I can find it. There's also this one, too. Like, th this was my other shirt. Um, uh, if I can find another image. Open image and new tab. Yeah. This was the other one. I also had this shirt, this this blue Lacoste shirt. I know this is a much smaller image, but I had this blue Lacoste shirt as well, and that was my other like good luck shirt. Um, so basically, the point that I was making is that like everybody has superstitions, um, and it's like I had my good luck shirts, like the Canada shirt. I had the look blue, dark blue Lacoste polo shirt. Um, so those were like my two good shirts. So when I did well, I would wear them. If I needed a good shirt, I would always wear it. Um, and the same thing for a lot of other players. Like you might have a t-shirt, you might have a pen. Like there are a lot of these little superstitions um, that the players have. Yeah. Yeah. So as far as never wearing the shirt, I assume it's twofold. I think it's superstition. He probably won a game with it and he's been wearing it ever since. Also, he probably doesn't want to have to think about clothes or worry about these sorts of things at all. So that's the other part of it. Yeah. So that's the bottom line. It's a placebo effect. Oh, I'm not saying that, that it's great, but I'm saying chess players are generally superstitious. Um, so so that, that's why if you're wondering why Nepo's wearing the same shirt. You know, another guy who would wear the same shirt is Timur Rajbov. There was a tournament I played in Basna in Romania, and um, he, would, he wore the same shirt, I think, the entire tournament. Um, let me see if I can find a picture. Let me see. Um, images. Yeah, there, there's this shirt. I'll, 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 I'll pull this uh, open image and new tab. So in, in, when we played this turn, this is from a different tournament, by the way, but this picture of Timur Rajbov, he wore the same shirt every single day during this tournament in Romania in 2011 in, called, in Bosnia. Um, so, so yeah, so he, he, he wore the same thing. What, what was the question? Fabiano said he's wondering what? Fabiano's wondering about what? I, I didn't quite see it. But anyway, um, yeah. Yeah. So, all right, back to the game. Um, as I was saying, yeah, isn't it deja vu for yesterday when you said it? Uh, yeah, I spoke about superstition yesterday too, but I didn't go into specifics about shirts. So, all right. Fabiano said he's wondering why so many games are following anonymous Lee Chess accounts. Well, I mean, I, I guess like that's a big, 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 uh, big thing for Lee Chess. I guess Lee Chess can say all top GMs are privately playing there because the games are private or something. You know, I expect some Lee Chess tweet uh, based off what Fabiano said. Where they're gonna be like, see, even we, even we get we get the seal of approval from Fabiano Caruana, this 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 uh, Chess.com ambassador player, and look how great we are. Um, anyway, waiting for waiting for a move here from um, from uh, from from Ding. I assume knight d6 is almost an only move. I mean, if you, if you play h6, takes, takes, knight e3, now you have multiple problems here with the knight and the pawn on e6. So, um, so it's kind of a kind of a thing. Um, maybe there's h6 as well. But we'll see. I look like a hog. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. I actually have lost quite a bit of weight, so I'm feeling great these days. Uh, feeling fantastic, but thank you. Thank you. So, um, Nepo is wearing the same shirt, which we've been over a million times. We do have, uh, we do have, we do have most of the same mods here on kick as well. Bishop h6 is not a good move because I would just simply hang the bishop. So, oh, you mean here, bishop h6. But now I can take, 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 take. And the problem here is, again, I've got a bastion with a knight on d5. Let me refresh the page. Um, and in this position, I have a great bastion with a knight on d5. I can play b4. I actually think rook fd1 and maybe b4 here makes a lot of sense with some kind of c3 or maybe a4, something like that. So white white is for choice. And also additionally, if you play bishop h6, more importantly, you're never going to win the game with the black piece. Like Ding wants to keep the game complicated as well, if he can. But I would say that for Ding, this is already a very, very critical moment. He's going to have to come up with some, uh, some good moves. He's also down 20 minutes once again, very early in the game. Rook a7 is a very dankish kind of move. Feels a little bit loose. I don't expect it. I mean, I get the merit because you want to go like rookie seven to guard the pawn, but it's definitely a little bit dank. Do I think in the future people will be able to bet on chess? No, you guys. I think I think serious betting on chess is not going to um, not going to happen. Uh, maybe ever, frankly, because unless there are major sponsored chess events, like I'll give you an example. Unless like General Electric comes in 
and they sponsor a million dollar tournament or Tesla comes in and you have a million dollar, if you have million dollar tournaments every single month, um, the top players are playing in, then I think you could have betting on chess, but in, unless that happens, tournaments are simply, the prize funds are simply too low outside of the world championship or the Canada's tournament to where, frankly, I think people will, um, people will, uh, people will probably like make deals and do things. So that's the bottom line. Um, in, unless you have major events with like million dollar prize funds every single month, uh, I don't. I don't think so. I, I don't. I don't think it's going to happen because, frankly, people will be, be like, "Oh man, well, I can only make ten thousand dollars in the tournament. If we make some kind of deal, I can make like twenty thousand dollars off of betting." Um, so that's 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 the way that I that's the way that I look at it. But we'll see. So, um, let's see, let's see what, uh, what, what Ding is going to play here. Name some cricket players. Uh, Sachin Tendulkar is the main one. Um, there was that great, uh, the great South African player who got banned. I forget his name right off. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I don't follow cricket super closely. So let's see. Yeah, it's Babers was not a cricket player, that's for sure. So, um, all right. We ain't waiting for a move here. People bet on ping pong and they make nothing. Um, maybe, but again, like I said, I feel like chess is a little bit different than ping pong because because I feel like in ping pong it's probably easier to um, or in chess it's probably easier to make a game look legitimate when it's not. So, and also, frankly, in chess you do have this thing called quick draws where people people do agree to draws like either before the game or at the board. So, um, I, I I don't I don't think so. I, I I mean, small betting on chess will always be possible, but like betting into the the big like into like you know five six seven figures is not realistic ever 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 do people actually agree to draws before a game surely that's not allowed um it's it definitely i mean the top level no, it doesn't happen but at um but yeah, at, at like at, at the lower levels, like you know, like international master and GM level, it happens far more frequently than you would actually expect. Like there are many times where in where there you have the, what are called the leagues where you have tournaments played in like countries and you have the league, and then the last round of the event it's like Sunday Sunday morning game at like ten or eleven a.m. and the players just they they just agree to a draw and they get out of town early. Um, so yeah. Okay. So let's see, let's see what we're going to get here, um, from, from Ding. What is Ikara's favorite color? I don't have a favorite color per se, but it's probably blue. You are a big inspiration, Ikara. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, I um, don't think, don't you think there are sponsors who will finance it that would have bigger reach in the world championship? I mean, who knows? Who knows? I mean, a, again, like I said, I think the problem is that there's, there's no good way. Like I, I, cause I'll give you an example. Whoa. What is C4? Now, that is not a move that I expected. Um, that's not a move that I expected. So what Ding wants is Ding is a big fan of the BBC corporation. He wants to build the big black center with D5, also build a pyramid of Giza here and lock the Bishop in jail on A2. Now, is this good? Probably not, but he wants to build the big black center and the pyramid of Giza at the same time. So let's see. I mean, okay, let, let me, let me see what Sessa says just to get some idea. Um, Okay, Sessa is not a fan. It wants to go takes, takes 93, bishop h6, queen 2. For those of you guys who are new to uh, new to chess, um, Sessa is a supercomputer in Norway. I believe Magnus Carlsen used it in uh, for his world championship match in the past. Um, and I think it's at like one of the state universities or something. What is the Sessa link? Okay, I'll put it in chat. Um, yeah, this is the link. There you guys go. Um, 
So it's a supercomputer. It has it's much deeper depth than the chess.com engine with the eval bar, so it's a little bit better. So uh it's saying that after knight takes e6, takes, takes, knight e3, bishop e h6, queen e2, takes, takes, rook b8, and black is a little bit worse here. It's 0.4 for white. So let's see. Am I sponsored with it? No, of course not, you guys. No, of course not. I have my own computers running my, my own computers running on Linux. So um yeah, no, no, definitely not. Hikaru, are you a good boy? I don't know what the heck that even means. I, I don't even know what that means, my good boy. Yeah, so... Does point four matter? I mean, no, it doesn't matter in realistic terms. Um, but the, the one good thing for everybody who is watching, the nearly 3,500 of you guys on this fine, uh, fine Monday morning, is that, um, is, is that the game's going to get very critical very quickly. Like, we're already at a nearly critical moment where probably a lot is going to happen in the next few moves either black is going to build the big black center and be completely fine or um or white is probably going to get an advantage here. like for example you got some position like this or might be knight g4 to hit the bishop in the pawn um and your knight is on the rim still so ding is playing for a very concrete idea here of locking the bishop in jail on a2 that's that's what's con that's what's concrete um you smell a draw oh a draw is definitely possible but it's, it's going to be very very concrete and nepo is looking to the sky He's looking up like he's just wondering about this variation with C4. There are currently after today, today's game 11, so there's 12, 13, 14. So three more games. I love that you can't answer to so many people over here. Well, that is the point. That, that's what being a streamer is, you guys. Um, as a general general rule of thumb, if you're looking to get into streaming, that, that is one of the single most important things is the interaction with your chat. Um, by, by far and away, being able to interact on the fly, talking nonstop for six hours, very important. Nepo looks tired. He definitely is tired. Yeah. The prep is printed on the ceiling. Yeah. Yeah, probably it is. Nepo hasn't shaved since the beginning of the match. Yeah. Nepo is doing what I do as well at various turns, which is the classic playoff hockey beard where you don't shave. Once the tournament starts, you don't shave. You grow out your beard until the end of the event. Um, so yeah, Nepo is not shaving. It's, 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 it's something that like Nepo is taking from playoff hockey, just like I do. As everybody knows, when you, when you, um, when you when you um in playoff hockey you do the playoff beard when once the playoffs start you don't shave until your team is eliminated or you win the stanley cup and um i generally do the same thing during tournaments and i, I think i think nepo is doing the same thing here too yeah thank you for reminding me i need to shave today yeah exactly chess.com commentary should just be your stream yeah well they have they have to find a way to spend all the money they're making you guys so they have to have other commentary it's just how it goes um it's that's life. So so Ding's idea here is just to basically lock the Bishop in jail. That's what he's playing for. Thanks so much to Draenor for subscribing. Thanks so much to Draenor. Appreciate it. So um no, I mean joke joking aside though, obviously it's very good for the chess ecosystem when you have players like Fabiano, Nepo, uh, of course, not Nepo, sorry, Fabiano, Anish, and others. Like they do make money. They they're making money off they're making good money off of doing commentary. This is something that did not exist even like three, four years ago. So it's great for the professional chess players. Who, uh, who 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 need to make a little bit of extra coin? So it's it's very good for the whole ecosystem. Very very good. Um, so all right, let's let's see. Um, do I wake up every morning at five a.m.? No, of course I don't. Um, but for the world championship, for you guys, I do. Um, talking about the Stanley Cup, who's going to take this year? I said it before. Obviously, I'm biased since I'm a lifelong New York Rangers fan. But I think this is the year the New York Rangers are going to win the cup. It's the first year probably outside of maybe like one year in like the mid 2010s when I thought they had a chance, but this year I think they, they legitimately have a good chance to win. And again, all the stars are aligned. Last time that all five New York teams made it into the playoffs in, in basketball and, and hockey, of course, was 1994, the year that the New York Rangers won the Stanley Cup. So I think, I think Rangers are gonna win. Yeah, last time that the last time that all five New York teams made made it in that happened. Boston looks is way too good. I've been very unimpressed by the Bruins in their series against the Florida Panthers. To be honest, obviously they've been a much better team, and Panthers frankly just aren't good enough. But considering the that everyone's acting like they're the greatest team of all time, and they have such a great regular season record. I've been highly unimpressed by by the Bruins. Like nothing about their series against the Panthers has really impressed me in the way that it, it should, considering how many points they racked up during the regular season. So. I don't really buy it. Um, also, stats work against them. Last time that a, the a President's Trophy winner won the Stanley Cup was when the Chicago Blackhawks won in 20, was that 2013 or 2012. I think it was 2012 that they won. Um, so I don't really, I, I don't really buy it. I, 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 I don't think so. 
I don't think it's happening for the Bruins this year. I think they, they used up all their luck in the regular season. Stats work against them. And frankly, I was just unimpressed. So I, I just, I'm, I'm unimpressed. So, all right, back to the, um, back to the game waiting for a move here after C4 has been played by, uh, by Ding. Are the Lakers winning at all? I mean, I don't know. Basketball, I'm, I'm only getting back into, as, as I said, you guys, uh, I said earlier, or maybe I didn't say it on this, this part of the stream. Maybe I said it when I, when I was on kick, but yesterday was like very surreal for me. It was like the first time that I, I had watched Knicks game in probably 20 plus years, if I'm being honest. Um, and then like seeing the Knicks there and then watching the Kings game against the Warriors. I, I felt like, I felt like it was, in, I, I woke up on like, I, I woke up in like a, the wrong time frame or something. Cause it was just, it was very strange. Yeah, it was very strange. I was like, I, I, I thought that I, I, I had like woken up and um, I'd woken up like like twenty years ago or something. It was very, very weird. Um, so yeah. Anyway, back to the uh, back to the game. Let's see what Nepal will do. The intention behind C four is to lock the Bishman jail behind the pawns here. That's the idea. Yeah. How are you? How are you like this? Getting up at five and then stream because you guys, the fans who support me, it's all it's all about bringing you guys the best chess content in the world. Um, I, I mean, I'll say it. I'm going to toot my horn on something because it's, it is true. Like I work significantly harder than any other chess streamers. It's not even remotely close. So, um, so that's, that's called, you know, work and dedication for something that I love to do, um, at the end of the day. So that's, that's the bottom line. Um, let's see what we get here. Um, from, uh, from, from Nepo. Now you can take the Bishop. You can, you can maybe play F4. There are many different options, but my guess is probably takes and play 93 here. That's my guess. Yeah, that's my guess. Uh, D takes C4 is probably an option, but I don't, I don't really love it. Um, Knight takes C4, takes, takes. I mean, I guess it's okay, but I'm worried that I'm very worried about your pawns here in the middle of the board. It just feels a little bit weak to me. I mean, it's probably okay, but it feels a touch. It just feels a touch weak, touch weak. So that's my general take. Yeah. There's a brilliant sacrifice. I don't know. Maybe there is. Um, what do I think about the under-19 Hayduk split being in the U.S. Champions League final kicking out Man City? I don't really follow soccer that much, you guys. So soccer is generally just not my not my game. Um, that's the bottom line. Hikaru, back to the old days when streaming 24-7. I mean, I'll never get back to streaming like the 100, 180, 200-hour months like I did, you know, at the peak of the pandemic. Um, and I was streaming like six, seven hours every single day of the week. I'll never quite get back to that, those, those numbers. Um, but yeah, I'm streaming more than I've streamed in a very long time. I mean, I expect takes 93. I don't takes on E6 or, or take on C4. Again, I don't really want to go super deep into the weeds because he's going to pick one of the two pretty soon. Now, Nepo looked away again. He looked, he looked away. So I, he definitely is a little bit surprised by C4. Definitely surprised. It's football because you use your feet. I don't care, you guys. Here in America, we speak American. We're the greatest country in the world. We're the number one military. Um, we're the most powerful country in the world. So, nah, we call it, we call it soccer. It's called soccer. Get it right. Anyway, um, all right. So, yeah. Wait, waiting, for a, wait, waiting for a move here. Um, <laughs> China's entered the chat. Yes. No, of course I'm trolling, obviously, but um, yeah. The Royal Marines major lot cry. Wait, the Royal Marines? I don't even know what you mean by Royal Marines. No, it's more like it's more like a bunch of farmers kick the kick kick them uh kick them Brits out of our country. That's that's the proper way of putting it. Um, I don't know what the Royal Marines are actually. Sorry, sorry if I sound stupid for that, but that's got to be like the UK or that must be um that must be the UK or Australia, but I don't know which one. Anyway, um, all right. So what would I play here? If I was playing this position, I would take and play 93, but Nepo is probably deep in the tank, calculating D5, creating the Pyramid of Giza here. Now, apparently this is very bad because you can just take, oh, you can just take and take the Knight. Oh, so actually this is pretty bad. This could be, actually, no. So then I don't know why Nepo hasn't played this right off. Nepo is probably looking at this exact position. Again, another Pyramid, and probably wondering about Knight G4, Bishop G7, and whether he can take on E5 or whether he can take on C4. Now, my first instinct here is that the center is very, very loose for black. And it feels like it feels like white should be better. Actually, white's winning apparently. So if Nebo calculates this correctly, he should take and play ninety three. So do I think there will be a chess boom in China if Ding wins, or will they stick to their version of Go? I said before, like probably the only reason I'd rather see Nepo win this match is because I, I, I whatever it is, chess is not popular in China. I said it before, like I don't know why, but. 
chess just isn't popular. And I get it that you have like Go and you have Shang Shangxi, which is Chinese chess, which are more popular. But at the end of the day, China has such a rich chess culture. I mean, you have so many strong players. You have so many women's world champions coming from the country. Um, that to me is very bizarre. It's very bizarre that um, that, that Western chess isn't more popular. Um, but I don't think it ever is going to be. I don't. I don't think it's ever going to be uh, super super popular. Unfortunately, it should be like. I mean, there should totally be like an Alibaba like Invitational or a ten cent you know ten cent cup or whatever you want to call it. But I don't know. Oh, Mao forbid it for years. Oh wait, did 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 Chairman Mao uh, ban chess in China? That doesn't sound right, but maybe it is. I don't think so. The Huawei Classic, yeah. Well, Huawei Classic is a little bit different because probably if you go to the Huawei Classic and you come back to the U.S., you're you're getting asked fifty questions about about things. Um, it's not right. Okay, it's not. Yeah, Chairman Mao didn't ban it because I know like some countries it was banned, like in, in Iran, for example. Um, chess was banned for a long time. Now it's great that you have players like Gucci, Reza, Faruja, Parham, Sudlu, and others um, who are improving very quickly. But for many years, uh, chess was banned, like in in Iran. So um, that that is one of those things. Yeah, it's, it, ch ch chess is not banned in China, though. Yeah. All right. Oh wait. Be Wait, Beethoven's music, chess, and everything that was interpreted as a sign of decadent capitalism was banned in China during the Cultural Revolution, 1965 and 1976. Oh, well, if chess was actually banned by Mao and, and Xi wants to basically, Xi thinks he is Mao, then, then yeah, I'm, I mean, chess is never going to be big in China. That's not even a question. Yeah, th then it's, uh, yeah, th then, um, yeah, then okay. Yeah, I, uh, then yes, of course, um, of course, chess is never going to be big in China. No wonder. Okay. So waiting for a move here. Uh, probably we'll get Bishop H6 next move or D5. Very, very critical moments very early in the game here, though. Very, very critical moments. Um, chess equals capitalism. That's why Hassan doesn't play. Okay, very funny. Um, let's see. Let's see what we get here. Um, as far as chess being banned in Iran, it was banned because I think for a long time it was considered to be a game of chance or gambling or luck or something like that. So it was banned, I think, until like the 90s, somewhere around 1990, I think, they finally unbanned chess. And of course, it's led to great players like Gucci, Reza, Faruja, um, being being produced. So, so yeah, it was banned. It's not banned anymore. I, I think it had to do with chess being considered like gambling. I think that's why, because as everybody knows, like you know, gambling is is haram. Um, it's not it's not okay. So I think that's why. It was like gambling, gambling luck component, something like that. I, I mean, I, I'm not gonna go Google it right now, but something along those lines. So anyway, okay, we're in a critical moment here. If Ding plays d5, he's simply gonna lose the game because he loses the pawn in the center of the board. If Ding plays rook to c8, which is another move here, I think White can even take and play rook d1, and your pawns are very soft here on the center of the board. So I think bishop h6 might be the only move already. Might be the only move. Yeah, I, I will say I don't like Ding's opening choice at all here. I think there's a good chance that Ding could lose this game and just basically be, be finished in the match. I think that, that we could have ball game here. If Ding is not very, very precise. So Queen E2, of course, will be played to put pressure on the pawn. Right now, if you reach this position, you can't take the pawn due to losing your queen. And we get Rook AD1 played fast by Nepo. Interesting. Played fast by Nepo. So the idea here is that if you just play a quiet move like King H8, I can take, 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 and then you lose the uh you lose the juicer on D6. So Rook AD1, very, very concrete move here by Nepo. Um I really like Rook D1. I know it's not the top computer move, but I really like it. It's a very concrete idea to put pressure in the center of the board. Very, very concrete. Do you think Rapport is weighing Ding down? Um, no, but I, I, I don't think Rapport was, was the uh, I don't think Rapport was the best choice in terms of seconds. Um, when I when I consider the playing style, when I when I look at Nepo, for example, Nepo is very well prepared, but Nepo is also a very creative player, and I, I don't feel like the choices have necessarily been great. I feel like Ding has gotten into a lot of a lot of trouble in in various games out of the opening, um, in a way that he normally doesn't. So I, I think that when I look at it, um, and also I would say separately, the game that the started the whole downward spiral trend was this ridiculous H three idea that Ding played. Um, on um, move four and this this was game number two that he lost the white piece when he played h3 and um 
I think that I, I think that this this was a hundred percent a Richard Rapport idea. It was an idea that was sort of just play random chess, play the game versus having a concrete plan. And so I, I think I think Rapport I wouldn't say has held him back necessarily, but I don't think that Rapport has provided anything very uh, very unique that Dean couldn't have gotten elsewhere. Yeah, Jan hasn't showered or changed. No, Jan is wearing the same shirt because Jan is very superstitious. He's like, I won with the shirt. I'm not changing. Dude, you should have been Dink second, you guys. I have a real job as a streamer. I can't, af I can't afford to waste my time. Uh, I can't afford to waste 12 hours every day studying stupid opening, opening theory and ideas like that. I mean, come on, be serious. So you get Rook AD1. Um, computer says Rook C8 is maybe the only move where you're not, not in trouble here. Maybe the only move, actually. If you take on D3, I take this pawn with check first. And after Queen D3, you're simply down a juicer. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis. Down a pawn and you're in a lot of trouble. I think Rook C8 might be the only move to not lose here. Um, people forget Hikaru has a life now. Exactly, you guys. I know. I have a life. I, I have a real job. I, it's great. It's great. I have a real job, but I don't have to answer to a boss. That's that's the key in life. Find it. Find a job that you love where you don't have to you don't have to answer to anybody. Um, you know, you, you don't have the boss saying, you know, I'm going to need you to come in on Saturday, maybe Sunday too. Uh, I can't. I don't. I can't do the Lumberg accent, so I can't do it from Office Space. But you guys get my point. Um, you get my point. Yeah. It's it's like yeah, uh, Peter. I'm gonna need you to come in on Saturday um, and maybe Sunday too. <laughs> I, I don't remember that's the exact line, but you you guys you guys get the uh, get the take. You understand what I'm saying. So um, yeah, that 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 would be great. Yeah, that would be great. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. Um, so anyway. I mean, yeah, you're, you're, it's, the the minimum is what is, is it four pieces of flare? I don't remember, but but more is encouraged. <laughs> so yeah. So anyway, wait, waiting for uh, wait, waiting for a move from Ding here. Rook C eight, maybe the only move. As I said, if you don't if you don't take on d, taking on D three, you're just down a pawn here very clearly. Um, and if you don't if you don't play Rook C eight, I, I mean, like even Queen C seven, even this is just a free juicer on D six as well. So I, I mean, maybe Queen B six is a move, but Queen B six actually blunders Knight C four with the classic fossil. Um, and if you take the Queen, you lose the, the Queen, and this is actually just a complete catastrophe here. I fork the Rooks, I win the Bishop GG, and if you take with a Knight or, or you take with a Pawn, I just take the Bishop. If you take with or actually you take take take, like this also doesn't look good. You're down a Pawn. D six is weak as well. So this is scary. This is legitimately scary. Legitimately a scary position here. I think Rook C8 might be the only move to actually not be in real trouble where you might lose the game. Uh, if Ding loses this game, I think the match is over. I, I'm going to be honest. If Ding loses this game, I think the match is is effectively over. That's that, that, that's what I would say. So it's a lot like it's a lot like playoff hockey to use a sports reference. Where like in playoff hockey, generally it would score is like zero zero. So it's like you know whichever team has the possession deep in the game it's like you're like you're you're always waiting for them to score that goal same thing goes for soccer but it's like oh, there's all this pressure because like one side is like exerting this massive pressure and chess is the same thing in terms of the colors where like when you're playing with a black piece you're going to be under pressure and then it's like nepo was under pressure had to hold yesterday for the match not to be even now he's a white piece if he wins today the match is over so the pressure the pendulum just swings back and forth based on every game Imagine how stressful it is to play the final game for the world champion. Your entire life is depending on that one moment. How would you think if you were in that situation? I can tell you this, you guys. Um, having ha having played chess as a professional for many years and playing in the Canada in 2016, um, the pressure is very, very high as a professional chess player to deal with. Um, and it's not easy to deal with. Nobody handles it well. Not even Magnus Carlsen handled it well when he first got to the world championship match. Um, so I, I think what I would say is that it's very difficult um, to, to really explain. I think emotions, all these things are going through your mind about how your life can change, how you work so hard towards it. And because of that, nobody really plays their best chess. And I, I would say, however, that when the stakes are at their highest, that, that is the difference. Is like you see Magus, that is one of the things. When there's a lot of pressure, he still plays a very high level of chess. And um, most players don't. So it's, it's very difficult. And having had the experience in 2016, um, I did not handle it well then. That being said, in 2022, when I played the Canada's tournament and I had retired as a professional chess player and I was a streamer first, um, I actually played much better. Now, in the last round game, I fell apart. I missed a couple of opportunities to draw the game, um, but I had a very good result. And so I think for me, 
if I was in a world championship match, I literally wouldn't care. And I'd probably play quite well, but getting there is still very, very difficult. Um, and so it is, it is what it is. Basically, you need to find a way to not feel any pressure. That's the bottom line. You have to find some way to not feel any pressure. And it's, it's very hard to get to that mental place. Getting to that mental, that mental happy place, I think is very, very difficult, if not impossible as a professional chess player. I think as, as a streamer where I don't have, the, have those concerns, it's a lot easier. Um, but yeah, well, I mean, I'll tell you what happened. Choking is not exactly the right word. I'll tell you, well, it, it is the right word, but it's also not the right word because I had this, there was this feeling that came over me during that game that was very similar to the feeling that came over me during the American Cup when I was playing Wesley. So there's this feeling of like the tournament is over. Like you've, you, it's been a successful result. The tournament is over. You're just trying to finish it. It's like you're expecting it to finish as opposed to trying to find the best moves to finish the tournament and finish off the tournament. It's like it's over, but it's not over. You still have to find good moves to, to, um, to get to the finish line. And, and so I had this feeling that happened um, when I played against, Ma not Magda, sorry, when I played against Wesley in the American Cup, after after we drew the second game of classical chess, it's like I had reached this point where all the classical games were done. We were in a tiebreaker and I, I was just like, it's over. I've done what I need to do. And I, I thought it was just gonna, I was just gonna win the match. And then of course I lost that first, um, first tiebreaker match against Wesley. And I had that exact same feeling that I had when I played Ding Lauren. It's like, I've done the job. Like I've, I've done the job. Like I had a successful tournament, but you still have to finish it off. It's not enough just getting to that point. Um, so yeah, I still wish you would have won versus Ding. You guys, everything happens for a reason and, um, everything happens for a reason. I think, um, I think you, I think I think it was for the best that I did that I did not draw that game. So, all right. Anyway, and I know people are going to say copium, um, but yeah, it's not copium. So, anyway. All right. So, um we we have a rook AD1 being played here waiting for a move there's rook C8. Please fix that in the next candidates. If you draw Magnus would, would be playing now. I mean, I, you can't speculate on such things. You know, there's probably so, there's probably some timeline where yes, like there's some time there's some parallel universe where yes, I drew that game and I finished second place and I'm playing a match. There's also a parallel universe where I draw that game and Magnus is playing. So, um, it's it's all the same. Do you really believe moving to kick was a great idea? I think it's a great chance to expand the chess category, bring chess to more people. Absolutely. I think it's fantastic. I'm really excited um, having the chance to try and grow chess. It's, it's almost like the old days, the early days of Twitch, not the very early days, but like 2019 into 2020 before the pandemic where, um, where you know, I, the viewership was growing, but you're trying to grow something. I'm trying to do the exact same thing here. And I do feel pretty optimistic about the future at kick. So we'll see. We will see. Um, I genuinely think you would have had a better chance of beating Nepo than Ding, maybe. Yeah. So, all right, let's see. Ding is deep in the tank here, using a lot of time. Um, I I'm looking. I'm looking at Ding. This is a very serious moment. Rook C8 might be the only move that isn't trouble. And the reason Rook C8 is good is because after takes. Actually, wait. This yeah, because takes takes. You can take with a rook due to the pin of the knight. And if White trades, this is actually a very easy. Um, very easy draw for black after rook c2 because all the pawns come off the board. Yeah. I would have been blown off the board because there would have been no no pressure or nerves. I don't know. I mean, I think it cuts all ways. But again, it's, a, it's an impossible question to answer because frankly, I don't know what my, my studying routine would have been either. Like, I don't know if I would have actually quit streaming to prepare. I mean, my instinct is that I would not have quit streaming. My instinct is that I probably would have would have put in, um, I probably would have, would, have, would, have, would have tried to stream like two or three days every single week anyway. Um, and study on the other four days. And I think something would have snapped, but I don't know what would have snapped. Um, that's the thing. So I, I, I don't think I would have stopped streaming. And, I, and so I do have a feeling that there's a good chance that I would have walked in some really nasty prep potentially. But again, uh, these are all what ifs and you can't really, uh, you can't really, you can't really look at it. I would have streamed from the rest area during the games. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's my take is I, I don't think I would have stopped streaming. I think I would have streamed two or three days, uh, two or three days a week anyway. And who knows if it would have worked out or not. What's my opinion about Buddy Pranav's insane growth in ELO? He's gained almost 60 ELO. He's 2600. Uh, I played Buddy Pranav many games online. We covered a game where he beat, 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 beat Hans Neiman the other day. So, um, uh, yeah, so he's, he's improving. He's a great player. He's a great player. So yeah. 
So that's that's the bottom bottom line. He's a he's a very very good player. He's improving a lot. Um, we're not gonna be talking. We're we're not gonna talk about Hans Niemann right now. But I will I will have a lot more to say in the future. Make no mistake about that. Okay. Make no mistake about that. Okay. So we got Rook B8 played here by uh, by Ding. Rook B8 is a um, Rook B8 is a strange move. Rook B8 is a very strange move. What does Rook B8 do actually? Oh, it's the best move according to Sessa? Really? Wow. Um, really. Interesting. Yeah. Let's see what we get here. Queen E2. Queen E2, I guess, is a move. Um, why is Rook B... I'm really confused. I get... Actually, you know why Rook B is the best move? I, it occurred to me. The reason it's the best move is probably because basically, fundamentally, if pawns get traded on C4 here, the B2 pawn is weak um the pawn on b2 is weak but additionally like you can also just go like um you can also just go rook b6 to hold the juicer on d6 so it's like it's a double it's it's a move that has has multiple purposes here um yeah it's a move that has multiple purposes so let's let's see what we get would i stream title tuesday on my days off in the world championship um no i would not have Apparently, Rook B8 is a great move. Let me open Sessa and let's see what we get here. Um, yeah. Apparently, it's a great move. Yeah. How hyped am I for the Knicks? I mean, I assume the Knicks are going to get smoked in the second round. But as I said earlier, like, yesterday was the first time, I think, that I'd watched a, uh, watched a Knicks game in over 20 years. Like, it was the first time in, like, 20 years I'd watched a Knicks game. And it was really, it was just very surreal. Just saying, maybe, maybe it wasn't the first time I watched the Knicks game, but it's like the first time I watched the Knicks and they were doing well. Like they weren't, they wasn't just like you watch a token Knicks game just because, but they were actually doing well. And um, so it was just so surreal. It was so surreal. I was like, did I just wake up and it was like 2000 again or something? Um, and then to see the Kings also doing well, was like also very weird. Like, again, it's probably been what, like, Probably been close to like 20 years since the days of Vladi Divots, Chris Weber, and, and Mike Bibby as well. So it's just bizarre. The worst thing about Kick is that there's no phone app. Uh, Prex, no, there is an app. There's an app on iOS and Android. The app might be glitchy, but there is definitely a Kick app that you can download and use to watch streams. No, there is an app. There, there is an app. So Rook B8 is apparently the best move. I don't understand why this is so good, though, after Queen E2. Ah, uh, the Android app, Android app sucks. It, it lags. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, we get Queen E2 played here. Yeah. Queen E2 should be played. It, it's not been played yet. No, it hasn't been played. But I think we will get Queen E2 soon. Once again, those of you guys who are watching, I hope you're enjoying the free, the ad-free experience here on Kick. Hope you're enjoying that part. It's obviously a lot smoother than on Twitch. I uh, hope you guys are enjoying that. Additionally, you guys, if you do want to subscribe to the channel to support me um, out of the subscription, I do get 95.5 split, so I get 475 out of $5 as opposed to 250 on Twitch. So if you do want to subscribe, make sure that you do hit that subscribe button. Additionally, for those of you guys who are wondering, we're going to be doing a sub battle in the near future. We're going to be doing our Twitch subs against our kick subs. So we're going to be doing a sub battle. So if you're interested in that, you will need to be a subscriber of the channel here. Um, to be eligible for that we're going to have a lot of fun with that probably in about a week where um where we're going to basically make fun of all our subs i'll get to make fun of my twitch subs my kick subs and it'll be uh, it'll be exciting it's going to be a lot of fun actually i'm really looking forward to it so uh you can't use the amazon prime sub unfortunately because amazon does not own kick um at the present moment i would say once again if you do want to sub to my channel and you 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 want to use your prime just subscribe to me on twitch rather than on kick that's that's just what i would say just just to be some sim simple um do i think ali reza and gukesh would be ever playing against each other in the world championship definitely possible yeah so um do i enjoy roasting subs from time to time yeah it's been a long time put tucker in all the spots yeah yeah so okay what do you like more twitch subs or kick subs um yeah Oh, I said Amazon doesn't own Kick at the present moment or the present time. Yeah, okay, that's what it is. So, yeah. All right, waiting for a move here. Um, wait, waiting for a move here. Okay, Nepo is 
Wait, is Nepo not at the board? No, Nepo is not at the board right now. So let's see. Yeah. Angels are the best team in the MLB. Angels always have the most talent, and they always fail, fail very bigly um, by the end of the season. I mean, you, you have Shohei Otani, and you also have Mike Trout, and the Angels are just terrible. So I, I, don't, know, I don't know what you guys want me to say. I mean, what do you want me to say? Angels, angels are, are, are ridiculous. Yeah. So, do I have any other life goals other than chess and streaming? At the present moment, no, I don't have life goals per se. Um, um, yeah, I, I don't have life goals at the moment. I, I think what I would say is like streaming is my job. It's what I focus on, trying to grow chess, and that's 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 what I do mainly. Um, I mean, I obviously want to keep playing good chess when I do play the casual professional chess tournament. Um, you know, I, I I do love I do love competing every so often, but but overall, I don't have anything any special ideas. Why does LA get two teams for everything when everyone else gets one? Because LA is just more important. California and New York are the most important place in the United States. So deal with it. I mean, just deal with it. You know, New York and California basically subsidize so many, so many, so many poor states in the United States of America. So of course they deserve two teams. We're just better than everybody else. Deal with it. Um, anyway. All right. Back to the game. Um, let's see. Let's see what we're going to get here. Um, from from Nepo, I think the obvious moves are D four, Queen E two. I don't know what else you can do, but I I think probably Queen E two or D four. No, you are not better than everybody else. Yeah. Um. Would I rather live in L A or, or New York City? I mean, I I've never lived in New York City. I grew up just outside of New York City. Um, I mean, I I love California. I I will definitely go back there at some point in the future. I, I'm I'm unsubbing after that comment. Sorry, apologies. Um, apologies. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I will always love New York having grown up there. I think certainly in terms of where I got to in chess, I never would have gotten to where I've gotten to if I hadn't grown up there, but I would say separately. I mean, the, the thing is like growing up there, like you develop a certain, like, I, I think I can say this we're, we're, we're on kick, right? But you, you, you basically develop, like everyone has this, like everyone's got a bit of this, but you develop basically the mentality of being an asshole. I'm going to say that just outright. Like, and that is the one problem with growing up in New York is that like you, you develop this like very like harsh kind of, um, harsh kind of, uh, what's the way of putting it? Like mentality, which is just not very good in my opinion. Like that is the one downside to being in New York, you know, um, everyone develops it to some degree. Like if you, if you grew up in New York, you develop it. There, there's no avoiding it. Um, yeah, you develop it. I mean, Le Levy, Levy curse is like a, a drunken sailor on a stream. I mean, nonstop, like it's, this is not some, this is not rocket science. Like you develop it. If you grew up in New York, that's just how it is. Um, I mean, Levy and his YouTube videos doesn't do it at all for obvious reasons, but, um, but nonetheless, like, yeah, if you, if you, if you grew up in, if you grew up in New York, um, you develop, you develop that like mentality and it's like, it is something that I think is not really all that great. So that is a big downside to growing up in growing up in New York. It's not a big city mentality. If I go to if I go to L, if you go to L A if you go to L A or San Francisco, nobody nobody's like nobody's driving and getting you, you know no one's cutting off someone and then throwing a middle finger at them like you know fridge and saying fridge you out the window like you don't have that happening in L A or San Francisco. Like it's like dude, what are you doing, dude, dude? So um, come on, be serious. <laughs> so yeah it's like dude smoke smoke a joint chill dude um so anyway okay anyway um waiting for a move here from nepo nepo using a lot of time here and he's not been at the board for quite a while um there's like there's queen e2 there's h3 i don't know what the other moves are h3 is not an obvious move but queen e2 i think is the move that should be played I mean, they're, they're jerk. Yeah. But jer jerks is different than literally like, just like, is, you know, cursing everybody up and down, up, up and down, like, which is pretty, pretty much what happens in New York city period. Yeah. So, okay. Let's see what, uh, what Nepo is going to play here. Um, Nepo is still think has Nepo not been at the board for like 10 minutes. I, I don't think Nepo has been at the board for like 10 minutes plus now. I think Nepo is nervous actually. No, I mean, I think Nepo is legitimately nervous because you, someone just said Queen B6. Interesting idea here, by the way, which I kind of like. But the fact that Nepo has not been at the board for like 10 minutes is a sign that Nepo is not feeling all that great. 
So yeah, so like New York, you have that if you grew up there. I, I think New York though, um, I mean, it, it's a great place to visit. I, I, I would love visiting New York. Um, so New York's a great place to visit, but it's just not, um, to, to actually live in New York, I, I would never live there again. LA, I easily would live again. Just so many great things about LA other than the traffic and the people. Um, so I would, I would, I would easily live in LA again. So Nepo takes interesting. So Nepo, I think what Nepo is doing here is Nepo senses a little bit of danger. So he wants to get rid of the bad Bishop here. So he, he wants to basically take and go Queen C3, guard the pawn, target the pawn and go, go. That's the idea. What's good about LA? Well, LA specifically, I, I don't know, but I mean, the weather is great. There's great food everywhere. A lot of diversity. There are great mountains nearby. Um, those are just a few things that I like. Great mountains, the ocean, obviously. So anyway, all right. Um, let, let's see what we get from a from move here. San Francisco, I mean, if you go outside of San Francisco itself, it's great. Like the actual, the core, like the downtown of San Francisco is pretty bad, pretty bad. I mean, some like, didn't like the cash up CEO just like die recently. Didn't he get stabbed and die or something? Um, yeah. Do you have something materialistic goals like a nice Porsche 911? No, you guys, I have no intention of wasting my money on, on a fancy car. Um, that's like the stupidest thing you can do. Like you buy a car and the moment you take it out, you lose 50%. If I, if I want to lose 50%, I'll tell you what I'll do. Either I'll go to the casino and, and just like, I'll, I'll, I'll just put like a thousand thousand dollars on, on like red or black playing roulette, or I will go, um, or I will go gamble on a biotech stock and, and just basically, again, hope that it goes up hundred percent or it goes down 99% pretty quickly. I mean, there are much easier ways to get, to get, get, um, to get gratification than spending money on a car much more. They're, they're, they're better ways to get, get that kind of rush. Um, so anyway. Yeah. Let's see. Or you can even, if you need the instant rush as opposed to like that, then just buy, then like literally just buy call options on a stock. Like if I really need that rush, I'll literally open it up and see what company is reporting, what company is reporting earnings today. And I'll find some calls and I'll buy them when we open up later. Um, actually there, there are big tech companies reporting earnings this week, like Microsoft and Google report tomorrow. So see, so if I actually need instant gratification, then I'm just going to go put like $10,000 on like, Microsoft calls and, and expect them to go up 5%. Actually, you know what? I, I, I would not be betting on Google. Actually, if, if, looking at Microsoft and Google and the earnings that are coming up based on, based on like the YouTube ad revenue that I'm seeing, I would probably, I, I bet that their revenue is going to be down. I think their revenue is going to be, I think their revenue is going to be down. So I would, um, Actually, you guys are right. They're one day. They're one day calls as well. They're they're, they're the one day. They're the one day ones. I never I never did those, but there are those ones. Um, you leave the casino with nothing. You leave the dealership with a cool car. Yeah, but you lose fifty percent the moment you drive the car out of the dealership. Um, yeah, I mean the, the the moment you do, you you uh, you you lose uh, you you lose fifty uh, percent. The car the car goes down. No, I'm saying ad revenue. When you look at the ad revenue, you look at the, like the CPT, um, or not CPT, sorry. You look at the CPM and the uh, RPMs and you, you do ba basic calculations. I think it's down compared to 2022. So like, I'm expecting that Google's probably going to report. I think their YouTube revenue is going to be down. So like if they're reporting earnings and I perceive that it's going to be down, I don't really, I don't really want to buy calls on, um, on Google going into earnings. Also, I think Google's had a big run up. What, what are they? They're, they're pretty high again. Like, what are they at? They're, they're very high, right? They're 106. I mean, they've run up from like 90, like low 90s up to 106. I don't feel good about that. So I, I would not be, um, I would not be um, betting on Google personally, but that's just me, just my opinion, not financial advice, as we like to say. So back to the game. Um, we do not have a move after D takes C4 and we'll see what happens. People forget a nicer car is an investment unless you can really buy it outright. Mm, maybe. Why is the eval bar? The eval bar is very slightly in favor of white. I, th I think the reason is because black gets rid of the knight on the rim. So right here, this knight on the rim is stuck. Like it's stuck guarding, but also the queen is stuck glued guarding the knight. And so here, what happens after knight c4 is that you get rid of the knight on the rim. So your knight on the rim is gone. You have the rook on an open file towards the pawn on b2. You can also trade the bishop for the knight. And I think that already here, I think after knight c4, I think ding is already very close to being completely fine. Yeah, I think the position is going to simplify very quickly here. I think Rook B8 was an excellent move by Ding under pressure that he, that he found. I think Rook B8 was a fantastic move. So 
So, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, so I mean, you, you aren't going to see me going and buying my Bugatti. No, no Bugattis in my future, that's for sure. Okay, so he takes. Why is Rook B strong? Well, it's because it's a very counterintuitive move. Like, as a look at the position, Rook C, it looks like the obvious move. So you expect the C file to open up and the Rook will be really good on C file. But Rook B is just sort of counterintuitive because you're hoping the B file opens up, but you don't know if it will. Uh, does Ding have winning chances? I would say very low. I'm going to be honest, and you guys aren't going to like my take. I think there's a good chance this game is going to be drawn within within an hour. I think there's a very good chance we're going to get a very short... Um, I think we're going to get a very short... I think we're going to get a very, very quiet, short draw here. Um, we get takes, takes. It's looking very, very flat suddenly. Very flat. Yeah. Uh, why do you think the chess fan base has gone behind Ding in such a mass way? It seems like 70% of the viewers favor him. I can't understand. There are a couple of reasons. First of all, Jan Nepomnesi, he's from Russia. As we know, Russia started a war. They invaded a country. A lot of Ukrainian people are dead because of it. Um, on top of a lot of Russians who didn't want to be involved. So, you know, there, there are a lot of people who are dead because of what happened. That's the first reason. The second reason is, frankly, because I think Ding... Um, Ding is very, very quiet, and you can feel like, when you see the press conference, Ding is very quiet. You can feel like there's the emotional stuff going on. It's very hard for him. And so because he's just quiet and he's not sort of out there, uh, I think a lot of people prefer that, I mean, for whatever reason. Like, chess is one of these games that's very weird. It's like people, people, unless your name is Magnus Carlsen. Oh, no. All right, you guys, I guess I'm going to bed very soon. Um, I, I'm going to do a recap, and I'm going to go back to bed. I'm gonna go back to bed pretty soon. This is gonna be a draw within um this is gonna be a draw probably within 20 minutes. Oh my god, seriously. Yeah. All right, you guys. Well, this was a fun stream. Fun stream, you guys. No, I mean everything is coming off the board here. Literally, everything is coming off the board. Uh like literally everything like i mean we're gonna get something like this and this this, this, this is gonna be drawn i mean this is gonna be drawn very soon because ding has no chance nothing he can do either well this is a bummer i'm such a pessimist no th this is gonna be a draw very soon yeah. I'm trying to figure out how do I how do I even do a recap of this? How do I even do a recap? That's that's the question. No, no I will do a recap. Um But yeah, it is what it is. Definitely a bummer. A big bummer. Big, big bummer. Yeah, I mean, there, there's zero chance. Like, we'll get, I mean, e there's just no way. Like, even if you get some miracle here where you get this end game, even this is probably a draw with the double pawns. And this is the best you can get with two extra pawns. This is probably a draw as well. But um, no, I mean, th this is going to be drawn very soon. I will cover the um though to be clear I will cover of course um I will I will I will uh cover the re the the press conference now for sure Yeah, it's definitely a bummer though. Not going to lie you guys. Big bummer. Yeah. I mean a, a draw is fine for Nepo. For Nepo a draw is completely fine. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna get like rook c3, rook, rook c3, rook, rook c3, rook a5. I mean, this is gonna be this is gonna be drawn very, very soon. Neither player wants to waste time here. Yeah, neither player is gonna want to waste time. Um, so yeah, it's gonna again. Ding is gonna have to win game number game number twelve is the big game on Wednesday. That's the big game. Yeah, I should do a recap of a completely different game. Yeah, exactly. 
Yeah. It is what it is. It is what it is, as the saying goes. I should do my recap live now. Yeah, I probably could, but no, I mean, I'll, yeah, like, yeah, it's, I mean, there, there are only three games left, only three games. I think honestly, everyone's like, everyone was like really gaga about this, but yeah, it's just, it's not meant to be. Nepo, I guess, thinking for whatever reason here. I mean, there, there's just no way you lose here. Also, frankly, after rook a6, you can even go c3 here. And then like a4, rook a2 here, takes, takes. I mean, it's, yeah, GG, easy, why not? I, I agree. Yeah, it, it's, it's, a, it's definitely a bummer. I'm not going to lie. Definitely a bummer. Definitely a bummer. Definitely a bummer. So, yeah, it's, it's what it is. It is what it is, as the saying goes. So, yeah, that's just how it goes, you guys. GG, why not? I know. Yeah, just how it goes. Just how it goes. I mean, you could also blunder the rook on C4. No, it's not happening. But yeah, this is definitely a bit of a bummer. I'm not going to lie. Let's see what we have here. Nepo's new world champion. Let's be real. Ding doesn't have anything left in the tank. Um, I think there's a chance. Gamma Zeo says, why do you repeat things like four or five times? I've already explained the reason. That's, I said before, there was a show that I watched on um, Amazon Prime Video around late 2019 before 2020. And um, it, was, it was late 2019 before, before, before the pandemic. And it was a show. There were two episodes. One episode was on Myth and one episode was on Pokemon. I watched both episodes. And in the episode on Myth, he said something very... Um, very telling, which I internalized was where, um, which is he said that as a streamer, you have basically like 30 to 60 seconds to keep a viewer interested. You have to basically get them there and hook them with something like what, whether it's your gameplay, whether it's your talk and whatever it is, you have to keep them interested. Cause otherwise they're going to go somewhere else. So because, um, because of that, like I, I kind of internalized that, that concept of like no dead air. And uh, that's, that's why I just always talk and I will repeat myself from time to time. Simple, simple answer. And additionally, the other pro thing is that generally like I'm talking, so I have one train of thought, but also in chat, there's another train of thought because my eyes pop out and I see something. So you have multiple trains of thought. So your, your mind is kind of like, your brain is kind of scrambled. I don't know why Nepo is thinking here, actually. I mean, if Nepo finds some way to keep this game going for another two hours, I'm going to be fairly annoyed, I'll be honest. Um, because he could, I guess, play rook takes e5 and then something like rook a5. Well, no, this is an easy draw. Maybe he wants to go here, take and rook c5. But again, like, there's just no way you're ever going to win this. There's just no way. You're not myth. Yeah, I know. I'm better, right? Anyway. So. Let's see what we get here. Um, <laughs> wait, 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 waiting for a move. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> No, myth is myth is not on Twitch, by the way. Myth is on um he left Twitch. He went to YouTube. He went to YouTube. No, Nepo doesn't think he's worse. Nepo, I think is you, you know what Nepo's doing here? Nepo's just trying to see if there's any last little way to squeeze something out of this. That that's what he's thinking about. Yeah, he plays Rook takes A6. Okay, yeah. This after King F7, this should be a draw pretty soon. This is not gonna be a long game. Yeah. So, all right, let's see what we get here. Um, Rook C6 played. Yeah, this, I mean. Although, actually, wait, wait, wait a second. Wait, there might be a trick here. Actually, because we'll, if Ding takes on E3, you have King F2 and Rook C5, maybe. Maybe you have this. But also King F7 maybe just draws the game. Uh, now, Nepo gets up from the board, which I don't really understand here. It doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Like, I, I, I don't know why he's getting up from the board, but he is. Um, so, yeah. No, I mean, the, 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 I, I think Nepo just wants to get out of town. 
Dean just has to calculate that there is a draw here with rook c5 where you can just check check and go go rook here um or he has to um or he can play king f7 which because after check king f6 takes then you take here rook h4 and I mean I guess every move wins but king g5 is good enough rook c3 and check is I mean everything draws it's just a question of what the best way to get there is oh uh, they can't offer a draw correct but they can make a repetition where they just so like for example the way you'd make a draw here is something like this you would go check check and then you would check just to make the draw yeah so yeah I I don't expect this to be exciting I I think I think we're gonna I I think the Nepo is basically going to um he's wait he's hoping there's a chance to win but realistically it's not gonna happen yeah I mean why is there no draw offer you can't offer a draw that's why plain and simple you just can't so it, it's really gonna come down I think next game is the game Ding has to win the next game if he doesn't win the next game I don't I don't think he's gonna win the final one either so I, I think that game 12 the next one where um where Ding has the uh, white pieces is going to be the, the critical game okay Ding is thinking here Hikaru I have a Tesla and love it do you like EVs I have no, I have nothing wrong as EVs I would say that right now I have a car that is like 35,000 miles on it I have a Honda Civic and it works great so I'll drive that car for the next 15 years till it has like 150,000 miles and then I assume there will be better EVs than than Tesla so that's that's my general take also I saw Elon was complaining Elon was complaining about lithium like we need more lithium we need more lithium <laughs> um and I, I saw I saw some stupid article yesterday about that I was just like you've got to be kidding me Elon for real so um yeah anyway all right uh let's let's see what we get here from um from ding uh generally no I I don't particularly care but like I mean it's like just yapping about lithium non-stop it's just like give me a break are we gonna get rook takes e3 we're gonna get king f2 rook a rook a3 rook c5 but their margins are not good by the way Tesla's margins are pretty bad um so I just got back draw already that sounded exactly like Elon too yeah okay we're gonna get rook c5 I assume and this is gonna be drawn I this will be drawn very soon what happened I was away five minutes the game's about to end basically Nepo couldn't find a way to prove an advantage after rook b8 and he just simplified it right right until everything came off the board so I I guess I mean I guess I'll hang around for the press conference why not but um since it's such a short game so probably what we're going to do you guys I'm going to hang around we're going to watch the press conference and then I'm probably going to call it a day go do a recap and go back to bed frankly I mean I'm a little bit annoyed um a li little bit annoyed <laughs> because like it just kind of annoying but it's it's what it is yeah we'll get check king g4 probably and then rook a2 back He's gonna force king to h3 so and you go rookie two takes king f7 king f6 draw yeah or Nepo will just repeat with king f2 ne Nepo, yeah, okay so we're gonna get rook a2 king h3 rookie two target pawn takes and then you get this and it's just a very simple draw easy draw back to bed it's it's only 6 30 a.m right now it's very early yeah I live in a house you guys I do I mean I'm not an, I'm not annoyed about a recap I'm just annoyed that the game is so short it's like you wake up so early that you you wake up so early to uh to cover it and then the game's over in like an hour it's just it's just annoying it's just it's just annoying you you, you know what it's like it's like I, I mean I didn't want to wake up th this morning does that before Levy can get up yeah of course I mean I'll have the first recap I guess if, if Levy's actually awake at this hour I'd be shocked um but that's what it is it is what it is as the saying goes yeah it is what it is it's healthy to wake up early yeah it, it is yeah am I gonna stream slots I will never stream slots you guys just to be clear I will never stream slots I might stream poker but I will never stream slots just to be clear uh will I come back later today probably not I'll probably just chill probably just chill for a bit 
Um, wake up to go to bed. Yeah, it's like it's like I work so hard to wake up, and then it's like time to go to bed. Yeah. Yeah. Next game is the big game. If Ding Ding is gonna have to go for broke in the next game. Yeah. Yeah, Ding is gonna have to go for broke. Uh, tomorrow we will be on Twitch. Yes, tomorrow I'll be streaming Title Tuesday on Twitch. Um, Wednesday we will be covering. Uh, we will be covering the. Um, uh, game number 12 though we will be covering that here if I consider IRL poker no I I mean it's just not it doesn't really appeal to me I don't, I don't want to waste my time I really that's the bottom line yeah yeah okay Ding is thinking here just to make sure he'll play rookie two any thoughts on Ding's openings no no real thoughts okay why is Ding thinking it's just play rookie two and the game we all go home that's it tomorrow's a rest day so tomorrow I'll be streaming on Twitch I'll be streaming title Tuesday um both of them and then on Wednesday we'll be streaming in the morning here again once once again on kick and we'll be covering the world chess championship yeah why recap this game because why not why not how much effects have the leaks had not well the leaks we're not going to know until the match is over I mean really the big question as far as the leaks go it's very simple it's the, the ideas that I saw that were unique that haven't been played in the match were they real ideas that Ding was already thinking about using later in the match or were they just random like random sort of ideas that he was considering using that's what it comes down to and we're not gonna know the answer until after the after the match ends I think once the match ends we'll hear from Ding about whether these were ideas that he was thinking about using or whether they were just like secondary second tier ideas because for example th these ideas in the Nimzo Indian um with like Knight c3 Bishop b4 there, there are two ideas first one was this one with Bishop g5 c5 I saw this one specifically with takes Knight six Queen f4 now was thanks so much to Adam for the host with 889 viewers thanks so much to Adam for the host now this idea with Queen f4 was this an idea that that Ding intended to play in the world championship match or was it something that, like I'm just chill I'm doing it thanks so much to Adam for the for the host once again appreciate it. thank you we are currently covering the world chess championship match being played in Astana and Kazakhstan so we're covering some chess here on one of the big stands um thanks so much to Adam for the host I do appreciate it. those of you guys who are not aware my name is Grandmaster Hikaru or I should say Hikaru Grandmaster sounds a little bit conceited uh my name is Hikaru I am a streamer uh I do generally cover chess one of the top players in the world when I when I decide that I want to play this this great game but we are currently covering the world chess championship match very similar to say a boxing world championship match same kind of thing why am I only streaming one more game because I'm getting tired of waking up at 5 a.m you guys uh but I do think next game is the game that decides it all uh currently Jan Nepomniachtchi from Russia he's leading the match by a score of five and a half four and a half it's going to be six five after this current game is drawn um and once this current game is drawn at six five we have three more games left as a best of 14 match and you need to get to seven and a half points next game is the game that's going to decide the match if it's a draw or Nepo wins I, I think the match is effectively over if um if uh if ding wins it's game on again so uh, that's it's just that simple yeah what what am I sure title two said it'll be 11 a.m eastern time which is uh I don't know what that is in India time but EST EST is it's 11 a.m so being a grandmaster is part of you you earned it yes my name is master grandmaster <laughs> that's a good one it's Jan it's not Jan it's Jan uh, I mean I know many Russian I, I know many Russian people and they all say Jan it's not Jan or it's not like Jan the man or or anything like that it's not Jan it's Jan Jan is a Jan is a girl's name you guys it's like Jan Brewer right or is, I, isn't there like isn't I don't know anyway um but yeah <laughs> Jan the man yeah yeah it's pronounced Jan yeah in Russian, it's, in Russian, it's written J N. Okay, yeah. I mean, I don't know. It, it is what it is, you guys. But all right, so we're we're, we're winding this game down here. Um, Ding Loren using way too much time. He's starting to annoy me because he could just force a draw here with rookie two. I don't really know what's going on. Um, the fact that actually, you know what? Just looking at Ding's body body reaction too it's not good like he he still looks nervous he looks unsure of himself here and that's not a good sign because he should not be unsure of himself at all rookie two is is a very easy draw here with king f7 king f6 like this is very easy and he looks uncomfortable like he's not 100 percent sure that it's a draw um so the body language is very very bad the body language is not good it's, it's not good 
Yeah, the body language is pretty terrible. He's probably thinking he has to play for a win. I mean, you can't play for a win here, though. Just make the draw and go home. Or maybe he's making sure that it goes another, like, 20 minutes for uh, to make it look better. Okay, no, he does play rookie, too. Okay. Yeah. No, he, he doesn't think he can win. No, definitely not. Yeah, I mean, the game simplified very quickly. It's just going to be a draw. It's going to be a draw. Yeah, he wants me to stream more. Yeah, yeah it's, it's what it is. Like, yeah, that's life. Yeah. Yeah, it's Nepomnishi, I think, or something like that. But um, it's how you pronounce the last name. But anyway. All right, takes. King f7, king f6. Let's go home. Yeah, king f7 played. Yeah. So I guess we'll, we'll cover the... Um, We'll cover the, uh, I, I think we'll cover the, um, we'll cover the press conference and that's that. It's a disappointment just how short the game was. I mean, the draw itself is not shocking, but it's just, just a very, yeah, very, very, very short, very boring game. That's, that's just how it goes, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Dings thinking about streaming. Yeah. Streaming is so much easier than having to play a world championship match. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to get a draw here. Super, super exciting game, eh? Also, if white goes... Yeah, if white goes king f3 here, there, there's a rook takes g2. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, if you go rook h8, there's king g7. That's the problem. Even rook takes e4 is a draw, but king g7 is also simple. Yeah, I mean, th these guys are not... Yeah, we get rookie 5 game is drawn. Not shocking at all. Not not shocking. I think we all knew that. So, let's watch the press conference. Um, and that's that, yeah. Yeah. What it is. Game has ended in a draw. Refresh. Yeah, the game is a draw. I think. Yeah. No wonder Magus took a break, yeah. Yeah, okay, the game is officially drawn. Uh, Master Chef will start Season 2 next week, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I guess, I guess we'll watch it. Why not? Why, why not? It's definitely, it's definitely a bummer, though. I'm, I'm going to be honest. It, this is like the fourth draw in a row. Definitely a bummer. Yeah, definitely a bummer. But yeah, let's, let's watch the press conference. Uh, thanks so much to Alex Petrick for subscribing. Thanks so much to Alex Petrick. Thank you for the subscription. Appreciate it. Yeah, we'll start season two probably next uh, next week. I'm probably going to end after it because frankly, like, I don't know. I mean, I, I was expecting a nice long game, like a fun, exciting, action-packed game here and turns into a quick draw, which I, I also was worried we might get this happening at this point um, where, where, where it would be a quick draw. I was a little bit worried about that. So... Uh, I'm not horribly shocked by it. Thank you so much to Hello Hikaru for subscribing. Thank you so much. Yeah, I woke up early for this, and this is what we get. So I, th I think, yeah, we'll just we'll wait for the press conference, and we'll 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 go from there. Um, but yeah, just how it goes. Uh, definitely a bummer, though. Definitely a bummer. Why do they? Why do? Why are they signing the boards? They're signing score sheets. They sign the score sheets. Don't act like you wouldn't do the same thing. Um, I mean, I, I think at this point, it, it really just depends. I mean, it depends on a couple of things. It depends on the psychology more than anything. And like, I would say that the one thing from Matt, from like my own personal experience in matches is that generally when you make quick draws with white, it's almost never a good thing because it helps your opponent stabilize and start feeling more confident. Um, so that's why you never really know what's going to happen. Like I do expect, for example, I'll give you a good example. In game 13, if they draw the next game, I do expect Nepo to make a quick draw in the 13th game with the white pieces. So I think, I think, I think that if the next game is drawn with only two games left, Nepo will make a quick draw in game 13. Um, but we'll see. Think the team has to come up with better ideas. What do you think we'll see next game? I don't know, honestly. Like I said, I mean, with that leak, that's definitely a couple of ideas out the window. Um, my guess is that if you, if you were to ask me, what do I expect? I think we'll get... Um, hmm. My guess is we'll get... Uh, My guess is that we'll get 
some kind of Nimzo Indian or maybe a Catalan. I, we might get a Catalan in this. We could get a Catalan because it's so slow and just to see what Nepo's idea is. But yeah, actually, you know what? I think we'll, I think we'll get a Catalan or we're going to get some Nimzo Indian. I don't know which Nimzo, but we'll get a Nimzo or we're going to get a Catalan. Those are one of those two openings are my predictions um, going forward. That, that's my prediction for sure. One of those two ideas, yeah. This is, I think, the fourth draw in a row, right? Or is it the third one? But, I mean, Ding has been actively avoiding the Catalan, so, I mean, I also don't expect it. But, again, yeah, I, I think we're going to get a Catalan or we're going to get some Nimzo Indian. Yeah, I mean, I, I I don't know. That's that's my guess, though. That's my guess. I, I expect either either some Catalan or some some Catalan or some Nimzo Indian. I mean, we could we could obviously get like a Ragozan to me with Knight C three Bishop B four, but I doubt it. Yeah, I, I my, that's my guess. That's my guess. That's my guess. But who knows? Who does know? All right, so we're just waiting for we're waiting for the press conference, you guys, and I guess yeah, we'll we'll go from there. It's it is what it is, obviously. Definitely a big bummer, but that's just how it goes. Just how it goes. Uh, Anisha's commentary is the best. Yeah, I mean it, it's it's fine. Yeah, the game, game was already drawn, you guys. The game was drawn. So we're just waiting for the press conference, and we're going to go from there. How was it drawn? Because basically, if you move the rook away, you lose the juicer, and now both sides have a rook and two pawns. Neither side can win. And if you play rook e8, uh, rook e8, I just go back. I keep attacking the rook, whichever square you go on. So you can't keep the rook to guard the pawn. And if you play king f3, there's rook takes g2 here. If you take, just takes. Nothing you can do. Yeah. It's a high-level accuracy draw that everyone's waiting for. No one's waiting for this draw. Literally nobody's waiting for this draw. Okay, the press conference is about to start, so let's uh, stop the music and let's let's move over. Uh, let me unmute this, and let's see what they're going to say. One second. Where were we? Okay, there we go. Okay. There we go, and let me unmute it. I just let Ketsi announce that. At the end of the press conference, she always announces when the next, yeah. uh, when the next game is going to be. But I'm pretty sure there is a free day, uh, there is a free day tomorrow, and then uh, they probably play three in a row. Mm -hmm. No, mm -mm. two in a row, right? It's three to go. So then, it, that, then that's just normal. Two and then right? a rest day. Yeah, two rest day game fourteen. Okay, now I'm confused. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. Let's hope. Here we go. Press conference time. Hello everyone, welcome at the press conference of round 11. Today the game has ended in a draw and the current score is... Sound okay, you guys? It sound good? ...6 to uh, 5 in favor of Jana Pomnishy. Uh, I would like to ask both the similar question, the same it's question. It's good? Okay, but, cool. Uh, first I will go with Ding. Uh, the first moves in today's game were similar to the one you played at the Candidates Tournament back in 2020, which was won by mm -hmm. Janne Pomnishy. Does this past result influence today's game from a psychological point of view? Yeah, when, I, when he played A3, I, I recorded game. It was a very bad memory for me. Uh, he didn't push very hard to win with this line, but why it's always maintain some True. advantages. And Black had to be careful to help, but today he yeah we we played another line mm -hmm. in this uh, in this duration, and I guess I, my play was much better. Wait, what happened? Time. Oh, did it just pop down? Wait, sorry, why did it pop okay. down? Uh, what about you? Sorry, Jean? um, sorry, Jan. Do you want me to repeat the question? Maybe? Sorry about that. Oh, no, 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 
well, not really. I can I, I can slightly recall the question. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I'm turning it up a little. Yeah. Um, this uh, a three d three a three real Lopez is always like, slight pressure for white, and I guess that should uh, be better. Yeah, yeah, we had this game in uh, louder. Okay, I'll turn it up a bit more. But uh, I think yeah, today uh, uh, Ding played a different uh, different oh, line. Yeah, this early a ninety five c five. I mean, basically all lines are very good against a three, and everywhere white is like a very small pressure. Uh, I'm not I'm not quite sure. I was I was right to just to take on c four because somehow I thought that I will at least get this three against two rook end game. Uh, but uh, yeah, unfortunately, three against two never never mm -hmm. happens. So True. like, black has enough enough time to to make sure like it's uh, white won't get an extra pawn. So yeah, probably this was a little bit premature. But anyway, I think yeah, black is very solid. So yeah, perhaps should have played it slowly. Like I don't know, queen e two maybe instead of uh, d takes e four. Uh, yeah, so this was perhaps not the best decision. But anyway, I don't think it was something very serious for white. Um, think was there today's game a real, a, any real chances to spice up a little bit the position and to play for a decisive result? If so, where do you think you could have deviate in order to get more active game? Well, after knight g5, at that point I play c4, and uh, yes, after c4 he always have the chance to liquorize to the end game. But instead of c4, if I play anything else, then f4 comes, I mm -hmm. will be in danger of getting worse. So I don't think I have so many chances today. Right, and also I'll just follow up with the next question. Uh, there are still three games to go in which you will have two whites. Uh, is there anything you will change in your strategy to uh, maximize your chances to, uh, to get Can the I should lose off board? Um, I mean, I could, but Of course, I will try my best. They, the they should have games. it themselves, though, honestly. Also, tomorrow is a, will, be, will be a rest day. I have more time to prepare some extra idea. <laughs> All right, thank you. Um, Jan, do you think that the most difficult part of I the I mean, he has two whites. There's still chances. Uh, is already behind, and now you just have to finish the job, or you do you think that the most critical games are still ahead of you? Uh, you got to be kidding. <laughs> Sorry? You got to be kidding, no? I'm not. Uh, I mean, indeed, like, it's, like, it's three games, and... Like, These uh, are the most serious games I, in the match. I should, I should give it all, yeah, to... <laughs> Uh, to to do the job, let's say so, but uh, of course, like it's nothing like anything like uh, like it's over. Obviously not. It's pretty pretty much unclear. Right? No, but I, I I mean I agree with Yondo. He's absolutely right, and though. My last question. To He's absolutely right. It's a horrible think? question. Um. Anyway, do we have questions in the press? I would like to go first with <laughs> your questions. Yes, please. А, вопрос а, Яну непомнящему. Ян, сегодня вот а, ничья белыми. С одной стороны, это ничья, а с другой стороны, вы ведете в счете, вы еще на шаг ближе к титулу. Вы довольны вот результатом сегодняшним или нет? Um, the question to Ян непомнящий, and uh, the question is that today it's a draw. Um, on the one hand, it's a draw. On the other hand, you guys, uh, I'll tell you why Nepo is mad. Nepo is annoyed because she is a strong chess result. player. Are you satisfied with the result of the game today? Ну нельзя сказать, что я доволен ни в коем случае, потому что мне кажется, позиция была приятнее и ну такой был хороший. I mean, she's like 2250. I think she's like 2200 plus. Like she, she legitimately, she, she's legitimately played chess. That's why he's annoyed. If it's someone who knows nothing about chess, he wouldn't be annoyed. But she does. She actually has played quite a bit of chess, so she should know these things. That's the reason. Вот, но да, с другой стороны, ну ничья это в целом приемлемый результат в такой, в такой ситуации. Uh, I can't say that I'm uh, fully satisfied with the result of the game. I think that D7 was not the um, greatest decision. Um, after uh, B4, 
before there are plenty of chances, uh, but uh, Knight C4 was also um, a working decision, and uh, the draw is still a draw that gets uh, me close to, to the end result. So, mm -hmm. thank you. Do we have more? Qu oh, we have question from Leoncho, please. Leoncho Garcia from El País. As I don't have too much to write about today's game, I will kindly ask you your help to write about some different topic but connected with, which are the preventive anti-cheating measures taken by FIDE in this World Championship. What? I have two questions for both of you. The first one is, are you satisfied with those measures or do you have any suggestion to improve <laughs> in that sense? And the second question, making clear that I'm not asking you about concrete names, is do you think that any of the world's top 25 have ever cheated? Um, thank you for the question. Jan, we'll go first with you. Yeah, thank you for the question. Uh, it's, uh, I guess it's, tri it's a tricky question, especially the second one. So, yeah, I guess uh, in the cycle tournaments, like same was, I guess, in Madrid and uh, in the candidates in the previous match, I guess, uh, I mean, uh, one wouldn't believe this is possible, yes? Yeah? So, I mean, all the measures are, are being taken <laughs> quite seriously. <laughs> and also you sort of, like, trust your opponent, whom you know so well. Uh, but speaking of, uh, I don't know, some top players, uh, I mean, uh, you can never be sure, especially when you play online. Uh, but uh, I mean, yeah. over the board, mainly. Uh, over the board, mainly. No, over the board, uh, I, I could, I would hardly believe. Uh, but uh, there is always, I mean, there is always uh, someone who speculates about this. Yes. So once again, uh, I guess uh, uh, it's very difficult to like completely. Uh, prevent it like so there would be no like z zero chance yeah to um, to play unfair but uh, uh, I hope uh, that you know uh, the risk of uh, you know denunciation is too too, too high for uh, especially for the top players to um, to do this thank you Ding what about you well as we know there are some cheating cases happen online but uh, over the board Especially for the tournament I have already played, I have played, I don't believe there is uh, some cheating happens at the same time. Mm -hmm. Thanks a lot to both of you. <coughs> Thank you very much. Next question, please. Uh, I have a question to Dean. Uh, Dean, you are down one point. Did you have any ideas mm -hmm. of playing? I don't know. I have a feeling I'll something to say about this in the future too, just so to you guys know. Get back to the fight because you played e5 today, and maybe it's too calm, or maybe it's too early for you to take a lot of risk. Yeah, still, it's. Uh, I think it's too early to play something like Sicilian. At that point, still there are three games ahead. You know, in candidates, I I win on the last game, so anything can happen in the last three rounds. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next question, please. Ulrich Stock from Die Zeit in Hamburg. Uh, a question to both players. Um, have you heard that 500 meters from here, um, Hans Niemann is playing in an open tournament? <laughs> um, do you know about that? And what do you think about that? Oh, man. Jan? Uh, yeah, actually, I heard there is like a quite quite a strong open tournament yeah and uh, I think yeah, I checked um, I checked the starting uh, yeah, the list of players uh, but uh, still I don't get your question yeah. uh, no not really what about you Ding? well actually I didn't follow the tournament he played uh, so, which tournament did he play? <laughs> there is a side event of the match, uh, alongside Kazakhstan the Cup, that's the event, oh. yes. Okay, it's, it says a lot. Uh, do we have more questions from the press? I don't see <laughs> any <laughs> Everyone's questions. Everyone's out of mic, okay. but, but this is what we got. Let's see, yeah. 
осталось совсем немного партий. И как сегодня говорили, что сегодня будет быстрый ничья. В дальнейшей партии будете форсировать быстрый ничья или нет? A question to Jan. Uh, there are not too many uh, games left, and today there was a forced draw. Uh, do you intend to have any more forced draws in the upcoming games? Ah, спасибо за вопрос. Но черным я бы точно не отказался от быстрых ничьих. Вот. Но сегодня у меня не было такой цели, как сделать быстрый ничью. Просто так. Позиция. Позиция не, не совсем правильно распорядился преимуществом, и получилось, что как бы там, все, все разменялось. А в целом я просто стараюсь играть в шахматы. Yeah, I do, not, I do not intend to get those draws when I play. Thank you very much. Uh, now it's time for Twitter segment, and Jesse will bring the questions from the audience, which are asking the questions on Twitter. Thank you, Katie. My name is Jesse February. My first question is for Ding from Margaret. Could you discuss the general ideas after C4 and the possible imbalances since it took 13 minutes to play this move? Well, with knight at man knight g5, the idea was uh, take on e6 or play f4, then take on e6, and knight mm -hmm. take on f4. So with c4, first I cut his bishop, and yeah, that's basically the whole point behind c4. <laughs> Thank you. Next question, please. The next question is from Amit, for both of you. If you were to propose challenges or changes rather to the World Chess Championship match format, what would you suggest? So if you were to change the format of the match, what would you suggest? Jan, we will go first with you. Uh, yeah, good question. Uh, but uh, uh, for a moment, uh, actually, I don't care. What about you, Ding? <laughs> Well, now I think the tournament can be even longer. You want to have more rounds? <laughs> yeah, more rounds. <laughs> okay. Would they be classical rounds or other? Uh, classical rounds, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you, fair enough. Next and question, please. My last question is a little unrelated to the match for Nepo. Are you still following Dota? Do you make time for gaming these days? Uh, uh, thank you for the question. Uh, yeah, sometimes I follow, but uh, I almost like stopped playing. And surely, okay, uh, uh, there is <laughs> no like no free time here to uh, to play one or two games here. Yeah, but uh, he did yeah, play Dota in the past, yeah. Uh, when it, like after the match, perhaps yeah, I'll <laughs> I'll play a bit. But yeah, for now, it's yeah, not the best idea. There was one more related to Dota. What is your MMR? Uh, before it was higher than now. All right, thanks. Thank you very much. Um, I see that there is no more okay, questions they're done, in the right? press. I don't have more questions as well. Tomorrow will be the rest day for the players. The match will resume on 26th of April. I wish the players uh. to have a good rest day tomorrow. Thank you very much. All right, you guys. Well, that, was, uh, that was super exciting. Super exciting, you guys. So on that note, that is the um, that is the end of the day for for everybody. End of this this eleventh uh, game. So on that note, you guys. Uh, basically, what I'll say is that press conference went downhill really, really quickly. Um, not not really great, actually. All being said, obviously, it would have been better if there was a. Uh, there's more to the game, more meat to everything. But as as I said before, I have a feeling we'll be revisiting this uh, this press conference at some point. At some point. In the future um but at any rate you guys uh gonna call it a day for right now i'm gonna go do a recap um i'll, I'll go do a recap of uh of this game number 11 i hope you guys enjoy the stream i know it was very short we will be back on wednesday and um we'll be back on wednesday morning covering the uh covering game number 12 of the world chess championship match and going from there so i'll see you guys all on wednesday hope you have a great rest of your morning after an evening wherever you are we're going to say send the raid over to streamer called kinski and i will see you guys then have a good one everybody Bye.